Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the field. Hello and happy Saturday to all you out there, wherever you are and whenever you may be listening. This afternoon's WKMC TV broadcast is a District 4 Class 2A quarterfinal matchup sponsored by viewers like you, including my little ones, Penelope and Tatum. Yes. And it features the Bloomsburg Panthers and the number two seed in District 4 Class 2A, the Mount Carmel Area Red Tornadoes. My name is Jim Lesko. Alongside me is my brother, Dan. Jose Gonzalez supports us from the sideline, and together we're coming to you live from the Jazz Dimitic Field at the famed Silver Bowl in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania on a bright and brisk Saturday afternoon, we'll call it. Game time temperature under 50, Dan. We're looking at 48 right now. So the last time the Red Tornadoes and the Panthers met on this field was five weeks ago. The Red Tornadoes won that one by a count of 40-12, to 12, and then the next four as well to finish the regular season on on a bit of a roll, Dan, at eight yeah. and two. Yeah. And I think, I think we're about to pause here for the national anthem. Looks like we're just getting ready to get started again. It's a beautiful day here in Mount Carmel. Sun shining, folks still, still rolling in here, playing on a Saturday. Good afternoon, tonight. ladies and gentlemen, and welcome yeah, Saturday. to Saturday. Playing on a Saturday today <laughs> afternoon. Uh, I think district, excuse me, class, class. Four, four A played yesterday. Okay. One and two plays today. But again, we'll wait and see here where we're where we're going. But Dan, like we said, Mount Carmel on a bit of a roll here, five straight. For sure. Uh, started with Bloom, would like to keep it going uh, today and and start a march towards a potential district championship. Yeah, and uh, you know the the pretty much one of the keys for them tonight is going to be um, if you look back at their their last game against Bloomsburg. They rushed for 389 yards. And I think you're right, Jim. Now we are going to be pausing for the national anthem, so we'll get back to that in a second. We ask that you please remain standing for the Mount Carmel area alma mater to be played by the Big Red Band and our national anthem. Here at the Silver Bowl again. It's a Saturday afternoon. 
District 4 Class 2A quarterfinal matchup between the visiting Bloomsburg Panthers, the seven seed, and the hosting Mount Carmel area Red Tornadoes, the two seed. Uh, so, Dan, what are you looking for in this afternoon's game? Well, like I said, Jim, uh, you know, the Red Tornadoes, uh, it's been pretty much a common theme through their eight wins. They rushed for 389 yards in, the, in that last matchup five weeks ago against these Panthers. And that's been a common theme for all of their eight victories through, through their, you know, their eight and two regular season. They've rushed for over 300 yards in all eight of those wins. So that's going to be a big, uh, big point of emphasis for them tonight. It's going to be getting moving on the ground and getting to that that 300 yard threshold, which has been their, you know, kind of their, their happy mark. That's that's where they've felt comfortable. Yeah, and I think you talk about that that rushing attack again on the season. They average just over 323 yards a game, uh, and and you know from what Jose had had provided this week, that's this makes them the basically the most lethal rushing attack the Red Tornadoes have ever had. Uh, Which is pretty you think impressive. Of the story, the, the winningest program in, in the state, uh, fifth or sixth in the country, excuse me. And, you know, the only other team that's ever even rushed over 300 yards is the 1969 team, um, which, oddly enough, we'll talk about them a little bit later, too. Uh, they ran for 320.8, and this Red Tornado team was up 323.3. Wow, that's, imp that's real impressive. So, so you've got that going on from the Red Tornado side. What do you what do you see from the Panthers? So, from the Panthers side, they they had 116 passing yards last time around. That was uh, Michael Whittem, the quarterback. It was his first it was his first game getting the start after the injury to um, the original starting quarterback Liam Zentner. So, they're going to be looking to um, to Whittem this week. Now that he's developed, he's had five weeks in that starting role to kind of really take off and, and develop a, a pretty solid passing game. That's what they're definitely going to be looking for. And the teams will come to midfield here. On the Red Tornado side, you'll, your captains will be David Stellar, Nestico, as usual. And tonight's game captain is Ken Wetzel. On the other side, looks like that's Widom, the quarterback, Gazevich, uh, Rasmussen, and Stobo. And the Panthers won the toss, deferred. So the Red Tornadoes will take the ball first. So we'll get to see that rush attack. Pretty early, Dan. Yeah, and uh, I, th I think this is uh, going to be good for the Big Red to get that offense that has been, you know, so lethal, and especially in the past five weeks. Like you said, they, they ran off, a, you know, five, six, uh, five-game winning streak, and they want to keep it going. They want to keep that offense moving right away. But uh, my, my, my other keys for, for the Big Red tonight, um, other than, you know, I, I have 300-plus in there because that's a, that's a big one. But they want to dominate up front. That's going to contribute to the 300-plus rushing yards. And they want to force Bloom to put the ball in the air. They, they did a really good job of kind of shutting Bloom down through the air and on the ground last, uh, last time they played. But they really they, – Bloom has a, has a kind of interesting rushing attack. They have a lot of different guys that can do different things. So they really want to make Bloom throw the ball and kind of shut down their, their ground game. And then for Bloomsburg, they need to develop a passing game for sure. They need to create some turnovers, and they got to play clean. They need to make sure that they hang on to the ball. You know, they're a seven seed coming here to play against a two seed, and you know, in you know some some pretty rough territory here. It's it's tough for teams to come into the Silver Bowl and and play well. Sure. So we really want to see uh, Bloomsburg's going to need to play clean, don't turn the ball over, and create some turnovers. So, you know, make the uh, the Red Tornadoes make some mistakes. Yeah, and they, they do a good job of creating those turnovers. And we talked about it a little bit at the outs um, before the game started tonight, Dan, or this afternoon. Yeah. I'll get that right at some point today. Yeah, maybe um, not. <laughs> the, the Panthers have they forced 10 interceptions. They really, they've taken the ball away via interception 10 times this season. Four of those are number three, Gazevich. So That's certainly something three, to look for 11, uh, as Bears the game goes on. The if the Red Tornadoes do want to put the ball in the air, something they didn't do. A single time last week for Shemokin. Yeah, and they didn't have to. I mean, they still put they still put you know 49 points on the board last week against Shemokin, so they really did not have to um, put the ball in the air, and that's that's a a pretty nice luxury that Coach Darrett has. Now we're underway here. Jones kicking off for the Panthers. It'll be taken by Farinato at about the 11. Loses his footing a bit there, just long enough to bounce outside. It's a good return by Farinato. will be close to the 40. Now there's a flag thrown late. Well, it looked like number 44, Wharton, in there on the tackle. Um, but you're right, good return there by Farinato. We'll see where this flag goes. It's Looks like a block in the back against the Red Tornado. So that's going to kind of negate that nice return, move us backwards to get things started right away. 
Yep. So we said before the Red Tornadoes, you know, didn't didn't throw a pass last weekend, and again, courtesy of Jose, he pointed back, out that was the, the first Tornado. time since 2017 against South Williamsport. So the first time in four years, and I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised it was that recent. Yeah, same hair, Jim. <laughs> for for real, that's it. it but uh, the conditions kind of played a, yeah. a factor in that for sure. So shotgun double wing for the Red Tornadoes. Feliciano's got Stella to his left. It's Widener and Farinato in the wing, and it's going to be Stellar. And he's going to go over the pile, and now he's outside. Rasmussen will bring him down around midfield. But we'll see where they mark the ball. He took off it to 23. They're going to put it at the 48. That's about 29 yards on the first play from scrimmage. Good start for the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, that's a really good start there offensively for the Big Red, That's and that's exactly what... Kind of, kind of what we expect to see anymore at this point. It, we, we don't really see these red tornadoes get stopped up early. They do a really good job of uh, that, that line, um, who we need to spotlight here. You know, when we get a chance, it does a great job up front, blowing holes open, and those backs kind of just have, you know, holes that they can drive a truck through. Farinato comes in motion. They'll give it to him. He's going to try to get to the edge. Good block by Stella to seal. The Panthers rip at the ball. Farinato does a good job hanging on to that. He'll get to the 40 for a gain of eight. Yeah, that's a good that's a good job there. Nice little setup. That's usually a, a uh, passing formation that we see when Stellar goes down into the wing and Feliciano's uh, kind of by himself in the backfield. And they bring Farinato in motion and get him outside. And that just gives Stellar, you know, a little less less uh, room to travel. He's he's right there to, to seal that corner off. So that was a nice, nice setup there. Back at it on second and two. It'll be Stellar again. And he's got a hole in the middle. Another first down, down near the 20. Another big run there by 24. Yeah, it looked like Nasser Kelly there making the tackle in the defensive backfield. But again, you're, you're right, Jim. It's every every play so far has been has uh, had some solid success. You know, three for three right now for the Red Tornadoes. All three plays working. Um, with the, the shortest one being an eight-yard gain by by Farinato. So that's a pretty pretty good offensive start there. Again, we talk about it before. We'll keep talking about it. It's Shimko. It's Moser, Geary, Nestico, and Kelly. Those big guys up front leading the way. And this time it's to the up man. It's Widener. Widener does a good job hanging on to that football. Again, the Panthers ripping at it every chance they get. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't forget, you, can't forget, you know, we, we always talk about those, those five up front. But you also, um, majority of the time, both of the tight ends, Chicatano and Schultz, are, are mostly they're in their blocking. They, you know, a majority of the time this team doesn't throw the ball a lot. So when they do get their chance, they're out there in the pass patterns. But no, most of the time they're part of that offensive line. Yeah, that's a good point, Dan. We didn't have Schultz last week. So right. it's good to see him back. Yes, it is. And now Feliciano's going to throw to Chicatano. He's got him in the back of the end zone oh. just out of his reach. It'll fall incomplete. It's going to bring up third down and two from the 12. Yeah, and, and that throw was definitely affected there by the pressure coming off the edge there on Feliciano. Did a good job of evading it, but just kind of floated that pass a little bit. But again, um, you know, when they when these guys do get out in the pass patterns, it's hard for the defense to to be re prepared for that because they run the ball so frequently. Everybody gets kind of sucked up, and then you see that that tight end get out there. Shikatano was open, and the Red Tornadoes go back to what works. They give it to Stellar. He'll get the Stellar first down. The not much more than that. Well, we'll right see. That doesn't look to be a favorable spot, Dan. No, it does not. It looks like they they might mark him just short. That's what they yeah, will. it's going to be fourth down. It looked like the last lunge where he went over the pile was enough to get it. Yeah, I thought so as well, but obviously we're the only ones. So here we go. Big play for both sides here early on. 8.57 and counting in the first quarter. Fourth and a foot for the Red Tornadoes from the 10. And it's going to be Stellar. And he'll have the first down, and he's still on his feet. He Puts the shoulder down. He'll get down near the goal line. All kinds of flags. Looked like possible face mask, I think. Yeah, I'm thinking face mask or, or I'm not sure. They might they might get a helmet to helmet here. We'll have to take a look. Personal foul, face, face mask. mask. Okay. Yep. So that'll move the ball. It'll be half a distance penalty. I think what they'll do, Dan, is they'll take the football and they'll flip it over. Yeah. They'll yeah. roll it in the end, and that'll make up half the distance. I mean, the 
I don't know no. that the ball could be any closer to the goal line without being on the goal line at this point. Right, and now we see Feliciano come to the sideline, and Stellar, it, it, you know, something that they didn't have the last few weeks, or they, they had him Stellar last week in the second half to use him offensively, but Stellar back here, full strength now, and back in the Wildcat. And it'll be Stellar off the right side, and he's easily in there. <laughs> For the Red Tornadoes, first touchdown of the night, 841. It'll be Stellar from a foot out. Yeah, and that's a, a, a very nice, uh, a well, well put together drive there from the Big Red. Uh, pretty much, you know, even with the, the block and the back penalty on the kick return, um, kind of pushed them backwards to start things off. But uh, after that, they moved forward on pretty much every play. The only play that didn't net positive was a an incompletion you know, it didn't that negative either so it's a really good drive and a good good uh good way to start the game off for the big red stellar on to attempt the pat here the kick is up and that one's good so that'll bring stellar another extra point closer to tying that mark by Sinkovich that puts him at 116 extra points made for his career Sinkovich sits at 118. yeah so two more to tie three for the win and i think stellar stellar would uh would like to get those at least an opportunity to get to all of those tonight yep. so one other thing we want to talk about today for sure dan uh, is just Again, on behalf of, of MCA Think Big Committee and student leaders, they just want to take the opportunity to continue to give back to the Think Big Pediatric Cancer Fund, an organization that MCA has been raising funds for since 2014. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, they're unable to host the annual dance marathon event this year, but through small efforts, our MCA community can still continue to give back in a big way. If you have the means to do so, please text the letters MCA to 570-600-6123 to make a donation to this cause. Any donation, regardless of the amount, is greatly appreciated. Think Big is a nonprofit organization that provides financial support to families of children who are currently battling cancer. Over the last several years, MC has been able to donate over $200,000 to this organization. Uh, thank you, as always, for your support. Again, that is text MCA to 570-600-6123. Stellar's low kick. We'll see if that stays in bounds. It will bounce out at about the 24-yard line. So we'll see what Coach Kogut and the Panthers opt to do here. Okay. Um and I, we know Stellar's got a good leg, so I think if I, if, personally, if I'm Coach Kogan, I'm I'm not having them re-kick this. I'm gonna ha I'm just gonna take the ball at the 35 and or wherever they decide to mark the the penalty yardage off. But it looks like they are gonna have Stellar re-kick it. I'll, here's something that doesn't happen all that often, Dan. I'm gonna disagree with you. I like it. I think you've got Rasmussen and Gazevich. Yeah. You got a chance to get them the ball in space because you're right. Stellar, Stellar kicks these. You know, you get a boot here. I like it. Try to get a spark. Yeah, but it, uh, at the same time, Stellar does get a boot here, and you get good coverage down the field. Then you're you're lo you're net netting a loss of yardage. Well, so we'll see. We'll here. see what happens. The Panthers they move up appropriately. That's something that we've seen right. Yeah. Once or twice this year. Stellar's kick is now it's going to go over Rasmussen's head. He struggles with it. He'll pick it up at the nine and try to pick his direction. And it looks like Dan's going to be right on this one. I love being right, Jim. All the way back to the 20-yard <laughs> line. So that's a big loss there for the Panthers. But it'll be first and 10 from the 20. Yeah, so Stellar says, all right, you're going to make me kick an extra time. You're going to make me work my leg out an extra time. We're just going to try and pin you <laughs> deep here. So I, I like to, you know, I like being right for sure. <laughs> but now we'll get to see this, this tough red tornado defense um, against this. Panthers offense and we'll see what they decide to do initially to start things off and one thing to one thing to note uh, number 14 Verano he'll be on the sideline today it looks like uh, so what that does is Feliciano kicks back to the safety position and Diaz is in a corner yeah again we saw that a lot last week as Verano was on the sideline uh, with an injury so hopefully we'll see him back soon but for now it's going to be Whittem running an option and he keeps it himself Tank Kelly 
Davitt and others on scene, Widom will get three. And that's real well defended there by Davitt. He does a good job. He, he doesn't commit, he doesn't overly commit to Widom there. So Widom's not sure if he should keep it or pitch it. And there was, he couldn't make a decision, so he decided to kind of tuck it and turn up field and everybody was there to make the tackle. So that's a that's a good job of defending that because the option is is a very difficult thing to defend. So we might see them go to that a little more often. This time the Panthers are in what amounts to a five wide set. They'll bring his average of motion and hand it to him to the trip side. And he's going to get upended quickly by Stellar. Nice yeah. play there to really stop it before it gets started. It's going to bring up third and about four, maybe yeah. three. Yeah, Julian does a nice job there, kind of just flowing with that play as the, as the motion came through. They kind of saw what was going to happen there when, when you got the snap that it was going to be coming that way and uh, did a good job getting off the edge, getting to the corner, and stopping that play up. Result of play brings up a third and three for Bloomberg. Again, it's about five wide. The field side, it looks like that's Kelly Gazevich. Now Rasmussen goes to that side as well. They hand it to him this time. He's going to try to get to the edge, but he can't do it. Farinato hits him hard. Doesn't let him get up field. It's gonna they're gonna lose two yards on the play. It's gonna make it fourth and five. Yeah, and it's uh this this red tornado defense is not the defense that you want to try and uh you know be, beat laterally. This is one of those teams that plays really really well um, defensively, and and they the linebackers, the safeties, they all run to the ball very well. Jones on to punt. For the Panthers, Jones averaging about 36 yards a punt this season. Farinato, the only red tornado back deep to receive. Looks like they're going to go after this one. Here it comes, and it's a fake. Right up the middle, it was a direct snap, and that's a first down Panthers. And that's Wharton, Jim, I think. So Coach Koga goes into the bag of tricks and picks up a first down. And Jim, if you remember, you know, five weeks ago, the Red Tornadoes actually scored a touchdown before halftime on a fake field goal. So Coach uh, Coach Koga saying, we got some tricks up our sleeves as well. So that, that's something they could do. I was watching the Red Tornadoes come for the rush. I was following Spears. Actually, I, I apologize, Jim. I think that was the Danville game. We had the fake field goal. So... That, that's, that's my mistake. Widom to throw now. He's under pressure from Schultz. Quickly gets it out. Little fall incomplete. Had Jones in the flat. Couldn't haul it in. Yeah, and Schultz let, letting uh, Widom know there. He, he got close. He, he let him know he got close. And, and, you know, he just got that one out just in the nick of time. So it's going to be uh, it's gonna be tough sledding, I think, for this, this Bloomers Panther team. Second and 10, the ball sits at about the 34. Just a tick under six minutes left in the first quarter. The Red Tornadoes on top, 7-0. Oh. Panthers go with a hard count, get some movement for the Red Tornadoes, so they'll pick up a cheap five here. Yeah, they're going to get a free five there, and it's, um, it's not something we normally see from this Red Tornado defense. They're normally super, uh, very, very disciplined on on. The, on both sides of the ball most of the time. But uh, that's a well-designed play there. And, uh, Widom did a really good job with the hard count. It looks like, Dan, is that, a, is that a pistol they've been coming out in? It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it looks like they're usually going four or five wide, but when they do go four wide, it looks like Widom's in the, uh, the pistol set with, is it uh, Kelly behind them usually, Nasser Kelly? Well, we'll see here. We're going to get a timeout from the Panthers, it'll be their first Why of the not, half. Bloomberg? Again, 5.59 left in the first quarter. Um, one thing to just kind of touch on here, again, this is a district playoff game. Yes, And yes as district is. playoff games go, of course, um, the ability to kind of offer this the service that the Red Tornadoes do and that WKMC TV does, you have to remember that this is all courtesy of the generosity of the Red Tornado community, both near and far. And as the Mount Carmel Area School District and its partners continue to do big things. Just remember, no donation is too small. Be sure to listen throughout the broadcast each week for ways to support these efforts. And again, definitely need some, need some help this week so we can do this again next week, provided the Red Tornadoes come through victorious. So you can call 570-339-1500 for more information on how you can do that and support WKMC-TV, which is a student-run TV studio here in Mount Carmel area. More on that as we go. But Widom sends Gazevich in motion. Now, Gazevich is going to throw it back to Widom. He's got a little bit of space there. But there's two red tornadoes who can make a play, and they both do. 
So a good job by, that was Spears and Feliciano kind of stayed home, but that was a, that fly came in from way out there now, and it yeah, was late. And we're gonna see what the call is here. I'm not sure. Face mask on the defense. Looks like a fiver though. Look, they didn't see the the personal foul marking. So, but that's going to be enough to give Woodham a first down. Yep. So, so they'll walk it off. It'll get to the 48 now. So it'll be another first down for the Panthers on this drive. Their second as they start to pick up a little bit of steam, Dan. Yeah, they're picking up some steam, and they, and it seems like they're, um, you know, obviously they're benefiting from from some some mistakes on the Red Tornado side, but they're also doing a really good job of capitalizing and, and picking up yards when they can. With him to throw again, he's gonna swing it out to Gazevich, and the Red Tornadoes are there to stop him. With only a yard, so nice coverage there, second and nine. Yeah, Schultz, Schultz does a good job there. Schultz and Stella are in on the tackle, but Schultz did a really nice job coming from that defensive end spot, kind of melting with that with that play, he kind of, uh, Gazevich kind of caught that pass right in front of him, and he did a good job of just kind of staying disciplined, not forcing himself or not going after it too quickly, and uh, let Gazevich come to him and made a tackle. So again, when they go this wide, it's going to be four wide. Actually looks like, I'm trying to see, is that, is that a, Haran? Yeah, Haran's a tight end there, I think. Or, I'm sorry. Parker Jones at tight end, but Haran's in the backfield. And the ball's on the ground, and the Red Tornadoes recover. They brought Kelly in motion. Whittem tried to hand it to him. They had a little problem with the exchange there. Ball hit the turf. Red Tornadoes jumped on it right away. First and 10, Mount Carmel at the Panther 45. And that's a backbreaker there for Bloomsburg after, you know, putting together somewhat of a, a nice drive to get things started. Um, you know, moving slow and steady there down the down the field. Then uh, they turn that ball over, and now the Red Tornadoes with a chance to take a two-score lead if the Panthers can't can't make some sort of adjustment. And you see Coach Kogut over there was preaching calm. He was telling his guys to relax. And Feliciano keeping himself. He'll get across the four. He'll be dragged down by 52, who is Jimmy Lyons for the Panthers, so a good job there. Uh, but Feliciano will pick up about six. Yeah, we'll talk about this Panther defense. They actually, um, they're pretty pretty uh, solid up front. Cole Stobo is uh, usually at that defensive line, looks like, at number 50. Um, he's, he's currently leading the team with 78 tackles. He had 13 last week in their loss to Central. And now it's Farinato in the middle of the field, and it's going to be Rasmussen that prevents Farinata from going the distance there. It was a quick little double reverse almost there, Dan. Yeah, yeah, it was a really well-designed play there. Did a nice job, and it looks like now, you know, the team's looking over to the sideline here, and Coach Dara is talking about tempo. I, I like it. Back on the ball quickly. Farinato comes in motion. Now Feliciano's going to throw it. He's rolling out. He's got Schultz in the back. And his touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Feliciano to Schultz from 17 yards out. 13 nothing Mount Carmel. Yeah, and that's a good job there uh, by the Red Tornadoes. You get that tempo going. And obviously, you know, we talked about it on the first drive. It's it's easy for those those tight ends to sneak out and kind of get behind the defense because everybody's peeking in the backfield. They, all that action, that uh, counter action and everything that the Red Tornadoes do in the backfield usually ends up with somebody receiving a yep. handoff. And then you have Feliciano rolling out, finding Schultz open behind Nasser Kelly there. And it did, did a really nice job of, Feliciano did a really nice job of floating that ball in there. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is wide right. So it'll stay 13 nothing. Red Tornadoes. Yeah, and again, that's a, that's a, that's a heartbreaker there. You get the, you get the turnover. You get the big run from Farinato, and then you get the touchdown. That's that's a you know a, a three play swing right there for Coach Kogut that um, you know really hurts the Panthers. You know, I mean that it hurts the all all that uh, momentum that you started to to get on that first drive really swung right back to the Red Tornado side. Yeah, it's a it's a kind of a tough tough series of events there. You're right, Dan. And, uh, it, it just you, one thing that I think is interesting so far from the Panther side is we I, you know I, we were talking about the decision to make Mount Carmel re-kick 
And then you see the way they're throwing these swing passes to Gazevich. Yeah. They really are, I think, just trying to get him the ball in space and That's saying, it. hey, you're, you're our guy. Go make, go make a play. So we'll see if, if they continue to kind of do that as the night goes on, as the afternoon goes on. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that, that we noticed in the pregame, and it's unfortunate for the Panthers, is uh, Blake Zizloff, who's, who's kind of started to become an integral part of this offense on the sideline on crutches. So Stellar's kick hit at the two, but I think the Red Tornadoes were offside. That's what it's going to look like. Or, yep, offsides. I haven't seen that one yet this year, I don't think. No, it's 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 not typical, but And I always wonder with those kind of calls, the, your, to your point that aren't typical, if that if that's part of the conversation that that perhaps the Panthers uh, coaching staff had with the officials before the game. Say, "Hey, here's some things we noticed. We'd like you to keep a look, keep an eye on." Yeah, it could be. Could be. Offside penalty indicated against the Red Tornadoes. So will take it five yards back. Stellar will kick from the 35. Now you <laughs> see if this change, or yeah, 35. Excuse me. You'll see if this changes the way he kicks it all. It's funny though. The refs, the, the refs didn't even have to walk that off. Stellar just grabbed the block and moved it back <laughs> five and said, I, "I know, I know what happened. We're ready." And he's going to go deep again. It'll be Rasmussen at the seven. He's going to try to get to the sideline, but a good job there by the Red Tornadoes of blocking it. It's Stella, excuse me, it's Fran, Farinato and Spears on site. Yeah, that's a good, that's a really good job there. Those those two end guys did a good job, kind of hemming that in. Ram, Rasmussen had nowhere to go. So I mean, it, after it, a pretty decent return, but you know, could have could have turned into a lot more. A lot of those times, the, these guys get to the corner or they get to the outside and they're able to break it. So we'll see here now that uh, what the Panthers decide to do after that fumble. Seems like nobody was really looking for the ball when the fumble happened either. It, it, right. it might have been just a blown play from the beginning. So it's Jones, Rasmussen, and Gazevich in that order to the field side. Nasser Kelly by himself to the boundary. Widom's going to throw. Nope, he's going to keep it. It's a design draw. The Red Tornadoes read it right away. Yeah. And he'll lose a couple. Yeah, and a lot of credit to Liam Bradley there. He took a he took on the, the lead blocker there, Wharton, who is a Big kid, man. Wharton, Wharton came out there right at Bradley there on the corner at the defensive end spot, but he held his ground and he did not give well, Whittem anywhere to go with that. Yeah, Whittem's listed, excuse me, Wharton's listed at five eleven, a buck seventy five, but he's bigger than that. He's definitely bigger than that. <laughs> but I, th I think the neck roll sometimes <laughs> makes true. him look bigger yeah. too, or at least makes him look a little mm -hmm. tougher. So a little tighter here. They'll have Jones as a tight end. Bring Kelly in motion, so they'll flood the left side of the field. And they're going to throw a quick screen to Gazevich, but it's incomplete. It'll bounce in front of him. Wasn't much there regardless. Yeah, and again, this is, it, that's exactly what they were doing. They motioned Kelly, and that pretty much made that a quad set over there with, with Jones at the tight end spot and, the, and Kelly motioning to the trips. So third and 11 now. 2.52 left in the first quarter. The Red Tornado's up 13-0. The ball rests at the Panther 28-yard line. Again, this is the District 4 2A quarterfinal matchup. Two-seed Red Tornadoes, seven-seed Panthers. And now there's five wide here. Now you get that quad set. Widom's going to keep it himself. He'll try to go back across the grain. And all the Red Tornadoes stayed home. Widom goes down hard. He'll get a yard and a half maybe for his troubles, but it's going to bring up fourth and ten. Yeah, he definitely took a shot there in the middle of that defense. It looked like Nestico and Chicatano on him there, and those are two big boys to be putting a hit on you, especially the quarterback. You don't want to see your quarterback taking hits like that. But um, now a little, little bit of a longer fourth down. I don't think we're going to see any sort of trickery here from Coach Kogan. Now, and the Red Tornadoes look a little more prepared for it as well. It looks like you've got Davitt and Boblick kind of at a second level, just keeping an eye on everything. Jones's kick is going to be very close to Diaz. Fortunately, it falls. It won't get him. It'll right. It'll be down by the Panthers at the 46-yard line, so the Red Tornadoes will start very near midfield. Yeah, that was really close there to, to, to Diaz. And that's one of those ones where, you know, the ball's kicked a little short and you're yelling, poison, get away, get away. And it's it's hard to just get your head up and find the ball. So the Red Tornadoes are going to switch up their battery in the backfield here. Rather than Feliciano and Stellar, it's going to be Spears 
and David, and it looks like Diaz mm -hmm. will be in the wing slot rather than Farinado. So we'll see. Don't expect any any real change here offensively, and this time it'll be Spears right up the middle, and he's almost out of an arm tackle. Looks like that was Gazevich that had just enough of Spears to slow him up to prevent him from really just exploding out of there. It'll gain a nine, second and one. Yeah, that's a good start there again, again uh, for the Red Tornadoes. Like you said, a nine, nine, nine yard gain for Spears, and uh, more of the same. That you, you change out the backs, but you keep that offensive line the same, and there's always success. This time it'll be a pitch to Davitt. Davitt's going to read his keys there and get up in, but it looks like there's going to be a penalty against the Red Tornadoes here. A hole that'll come back. Yep, and that's going to be a 10-yarder. So that's going to negate the little first down run there by Davitt, which is a nice run. Yeah, so based on where they've thrown the flag, it'll make it about a third and 11. Or excuse me, a second and 11. Yeah, that's what it looks like, Jim. It looks like they're going to bring it back 10 pretty much right from the original or the, the line of scrimmage there on the last play. We'll call it 12. Second, yeah, yeah. Second and 12, ball back to the 44-yard line. But again, you know, you, you mentioned it. Nothing's going to change for the Red Tornadoes, I don't think. Second and 12, second and two. No fret, no no, no big change up. They're not going to turn this into a big rushing attack now or passing attack. This time they'll give it to Diaz, and Diaz just goes like he's shot out of a cannon as always. Look at these red jerseys in front of him. He's inside, he's out, he's still on his feet. He's going to spin all the way across the 35 down to the 34-yard line. So that'll be a gain of about 22, a huge run there by Diaz. Uh, believe it or not, 22 yards, just a hair over his season average. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and he, he just continues to impress. Every time he, get, he carries the ball, he's making something happen. And it's, it's not only that he, can, he gets to full speed right away to get the edge, but his, uh, his patience when he does finally get to, to some defenders... The, the patience and the ability to set up his blocks is great. And now Spears is going to throw it. He's got Schultz. It'll be a little low. It'll be a nice completion there. Gain of, see where they mark it. Gain of about five. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good job there by Spears. You know, he uh, got his shoulders turned around, like you said. It was a little low, but Schultz did a nice job of going down to get that one. Um, so... Looks like the Red Tornado is trying to mix it up a little bit today, uh, this week after not attempting a pass last week at Shemokin. <laughs> Putting the ball in the air three times already this game. This time it'll be Davitt. Get up over the 25. Be close to a first down. They're going to say he's about a yard short. So it's going to be third and one. Now based on the play clock and the game clock, and technically, the Red Tornadoes don't have to run another play here. I think they'll probably get one more in here before the quarter. Um, just try to, you know, you want to go into the second quarter with a first down. I think you're right. It's a high snap. All kinds of trouble there. Spears had trouble with it, tried to finish the handoff. Oh, boy. Now we'll see. And Panther ball. Yeah. And that's a tough one there, Jim. Like you said, it, Stobo comes up with the ball there, but you're right. That's a tough one. It, it snaps a little high, and that kind of throws off the uh, the handoff there. And, and on the on the handoff, the ball hits the ground. Davitt was never really able to get on it. Yeah, so at this point now in the first quarter, again, we got five seconds left in the first quarter, so barring some unbelievably quick Incomplete pass. So this is going to be the, the last play of the quarter. 13 nothing Red Tornadoes at this point. Yeah. They will come out. Three, basically four wide to your point, Dan. They've got Wharton in a in a wing slot. Whittam's going to roll to that side. He's going to throw, and he's got Parker Jones. So that'll be a first down. So the, it'll be the Panthers starting the second quarter with a first and yeah. ten yeah. as the clock hits zeros here. So as we said before, after one quarter of play, the Red Tornadoes lead the Panthers 13-0. Yeah, that's a, a, you know, a little bit of a momentum swing there for the Panthers right at the end of the, the first quarter there. Yeah. So they get the, the fumble recovery, and then they come out with a nice, nice little pickup there to, to Jones. And who kind of looked like he almost sat down in a zone there. They, 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 you know, they flooded that side. Like you said, four receivers, and all four of them went out in a pass pattern. 
and Jones did a nice job of kind of just getting lost in, lost in the wash there. And uh, Whittem, they, they're going to have to keep continue to do that with Whittem, keep him rolling, moving out of the pocket, because the, the Red Tornado's defensive front gets a lot of pressure up front. So if they can roll him out and get him outside the pocket, he's got the opportunity to pull that down and run or get a pass out there if he can find somebody open. And again, a reminder this afternoon's District 4 quarterfinal matchups brought to you uh, thanks to WKMC and most importantly, viewers just like all of you right now. So please continue uh, to support the Mount Carmel Area School District in all the ways you can so we can keep doing this week in and week out as long as the season lasts. Kelly comes in motion. They're going to fake it to him. With him under pressure. Holds, not called. He's going to throw for Gazevich. Just out of Gazevich, Gazevich's reach. But the Panthers doing just about everything they can to keep Chikatano out of the backfield. Yeah, and it looked like nobody saw it except for uh, the entire fan base over here on the Red Tornado side. But that's a, that's a good job in coverage there by Diaz. Really nice job. Um, kind of just staying, staying on the hip of Gazevich there because Gazevich is... He's, he's a playmaker, and he can go out there and get the ball. So Diaz did a really nice job. Yeah, he's given up some some height there, too. Diaz listed at about 5'9", because that was just over six foot. Yeah. So he's being a, able to stay step for step. It's a tough draw for him, but he's doing a good job. With him to throw again. They're going to throw it to Rasmussen. It's high. Oh. Yeah, I was waiting for the whistle, too, there, uh -huh. <laughs> Look, you know, there's that question of is it a backwards pass, but nope, the official pretty quickly ruled incomplete. It's going to be third and ten. Yeah, those ones you're not always sure about, you know, it, especially because he's throwing, it looks like he's throwing it directly lateral, which yeah. usually is a, a lateral, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll let it be an incompletion here. And uh, Red Tornado is looking now for a, a big third down stop here to kind of slow that momentum that the, the Panthers were starting to build. So it's interesting. It seems like it's been a while since the Panthers have tried to run the ball. But yeah. And, I, and I'm in favor of it. I support it. I think it makes sense. As they come out with that quad set again to the right, Widom's going to be under pressure immediately from Stellar. He's going to float it. He almost had Gazevich incomplete. It's going to be fourth and ten. Yeah, Gazevich ran what looked like a, a little bit of a wheel route. And it was a, a nobody around him. Really, Schultz hustling to get out there, but the ball did get over top of him, but it was just a little bit short for Gazevich. Looks like we're going to see the punt team. Yeah, and it's interesting because I, I don't know if if that was a blunt, if, if it was kind of a free rusher that as the Panthers you're letting go and just figure you got to get the ball quick or what, but I mean, nobody touched Stellar. Yeah, I know. He got in there real quick, and it seemed like Whittem was kind of curious, like, hey, who's blocking him? You know? Right. He definitely threw that ball earlier than he wanted to. Jones to punt. That's a good punt. Farinato's going to take it at the 24 and get hit immediately by Nasir Kelly. So good punt, no return. First and 10 Mount Carmel from the 24. Yeah, so again, we'll see the Red Tornadoes. Uh, looks like Feliciano and Stellar and Farinato all going to be back in the backfield here one, after that last drive. One thing to know, and Dan, you pointed this out to me as we were watching early time. Um, on the defensive side for the Panthers, number seven, Jake Fogelsanger. Yeah. He's got a pretty big cast on his left hand. Yeah, It'll, yeah, he does. And the reason to point that out, Fogelsanger is actually their second leading receiver. So that's a loss on the offensive side. And when you talk about Zeisloft as well. Yeah, uh, the Panthers he's are, the second leading rusher, Zeisloft is. Yeah, the Panthers are really trying to put together whatever they can here offensively as the Red Tornadoes give it to Stellar, who's going to bully his way for four yards. Yeah, that's a good job for Stellar. Finding the cut back there to get one or two and then putting his head down and fighting for another two more. Um, and and that's that's something that the Red Tornadoes um, really benefit from is, is kind of having a back like Stellar that's in the backfield and just can bully guys because, they, you know, you go three, four quarters and, you know, you get into the third quarter, late in the third quarter, early fourth quarter, guys don't want to tackle them anymore. Guys, guys come up and, and they don't want to take that, that shot anymore. They're getting hit by offensive linemen. And then you're getting hit by the running back as well. You don't want to do that. This time they're going to give it to Farinato. And he'll do a good job staying on his feet. He'll get the first down. Farinato picking up the first down for the Red Across the 35 to 36. That yeah, that's a, that's a good run there by Farinato, too. Just, you know, we, we talk about it all the time, but 
it seems like that play, you never know where the hole's going to be, but he's always able to find it. It's gonna, sometimes it goes all the way outside. Sometimes it's, it's around the, the five hole. Sometimes it's around the, the three hole. You know what I mean? A lot of times it's, it depends on where the trap is, where the, right. the blitzers are coming from, stuff like that. And the linemen always do a great job of blocking it, and Farinato always does a good job of finding it. And another wrinkle of that, too. The red trainers are actually overloading the field side here. Yeah. And they'll send Stellar in motion that way, but Feliciano is going to throw it. He's got two men in coverage. He's going to look for Farinato, and it's intercepted by Gazevich. So his fifth on the season. And Panthers will be back in business, yeah, first and 10 three, at the Red Tornado 41-yard line. Yeah, and again, this is, a, this is what the Panthers need. They need to capitalize on these, these mistakes that the Red Tornadoes are making, and they need to put points on the board if they, if they want a chance to, you know, complete the upset here. And that's, and, I mean, that's a good job by the Panthers defense there. You could kind of see as the play was unfolding that Chicatano and Farinato were in, were in patterns, and both of them were pretty covered. Yeah, Ball's yeah, and uh, they also did a good job defensively of putting a little bit of pressure on Feliciano, yeah. not giving him anywhere to tuck and run either. So now Whittem will be in the shotgun. Wharton's going to be to his right, three to the right, one to the left. He's going to throw immediately, and he's under pressure from Kelly, and he throws high for Rasmussen. Incomplete. Yeah, that's a. It, it seems like that, you know they're. You're right. They're flooding these these sides where Widom's rolling to, which is really well designed plays, and they're all running like you know outs and corners and and uh, bananas stuff like that, and they're doing a good job of kind of losing their defender when yeah. they're doing those routes. It, it, whether either these guys are really good route runners, or they're just sitting down in the zone there if they're they're flooding the zone, um, but they're they're doing a really good job of. There's always somebody open, it seems. So Gazevich will be the inside guy. It's Rasmussen and then Jones, but they're going to try the option, and it's an inside kind of shovel pass to Gazevich, who does a good job. He'll have a first down. It's a block in the back there, though. We have shovel yep, pass quickly complete. called Number there three. by the official. So we'll bring that one back. Yeah, you're right, though. That, that inside shovel pass is a really nice, nicely designed play. And especially with Gazevich, you know, he's able to kind of fight through those arm tackles on, on the defensive line. But unfortunately, that block in the back, you know, really negates uh, that good play. Yeah, so they'll take it back to the 44-yard line. So it'll be second and 13 now. Uh, but that play, Dan, you see that. Really the first place I remember seeing that is largely Mahomes and Kelsey. Yeah, yeah. Where they that do that on uh, short yard situations and stuff like that. I think you see it just about everywhere now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an effective play. I mean, you, it's pretty much just giving your playmaker a chance. It's a little bit of misdirection. You know, you're rolling one way, you pitch it back the other. It's nice. It's a, it's a well-designed play for sure. And it, it worked well for the Panthers there, but unfortunately they were not able to uh, – that penalty knocked it down. And the Panthers are going to take their second time out of the half. There is the play clock was winding down pretty quickly, and it looked like Widom and Coach Koga were still kind of talking through what they wanted to call. Yeah, this is a, this is a big play here. You know, you, again, you, you really want to try and seize some of that momentum. You get the turnover. You want to really need to get some, sort, some amount of points, whether it's um, just getting in field goal range or you're able to actually get down there and put six points on the board. You need to get points here on the second consecutive drive that the Red Tornadoes have turned it over. Yeah, so one thing, you know, coming into this game, again, it always gets a little trickier when you're in the playoffs, right, trying to think of, of what m next week might look like. Uh, but but the reality is, you know, if if the Red Tornadoes come out victorious tonight, yep. they'll have the winner of Troy versus Sayre here. Troy and Sayre are playing at 7 p.m., whereas if, if the Panthers are victorious this afternoon, they will go to Troy or Sayre, depending on who wins that one. Correct, yeah. So that's... Uh, and that game again is seven o'clock tonight. So even at the out at the um, at the end of this one, once we know who who's come out on top here, I'll we'll have to wait another eight hours or so to figure out <laughs> right. Um, you know what next weekend looks like. Yeah, we'll be checking score stream before we go to bed. Widom to throw again. He's got time this time, but the Red Tornadoes are in coverage. He's going to float in the middle of the field, and it'll fall incomplete. There were a lot of red jerseys around there, but. Fortunately for Widom, he kind of threw it in a, in a dead oh, spot. Oh, man. Diaz tried to cover the ground, but it was a little too far. Yeah, and that's a 
dangerous throw. I, I, I understand there's a receiver in the pattern going back that way, but Widom's you know, throwing that off his back foot as he's rolling, and he throws it back across your body. That's, that's one thing that you pretty much, if you're, if you're a quarterback's coach, you tell your quarterback, don't do that, because that's a, it's usually a, a recipe for disaster. But you're right, Widom kind of gets away with that one. Well, kind of going back to what you were saying before about how a lot of times the Panthers receivers have been open. Yeah. That time, Widom had more time to throw, but the Red Tornadoes had more guys in coverage, so there was nowhere to throw. Yeah, and, and that's the, you know, sometimes that's the... And the Panthers are going to use their last time out here of the half on third and 13. 9.33 left in the first half. 13 nothing Red Tornadoes. And Jim, the fact that Coach Koga is taking that time out right there just shows how important this drive really is. You know, it's like I said, it's the second consecutive drive you get a turnover on these red tornadoes team that usually plays very clean and doesn't turn the ball over very often you're the away team you're the the underdog there, there's a lot of things going against you right now if you're on that blooms or panther sideline you need to seize this opportunity and coach kogut realizes how important this is by using his final time out of the half on this drive So take another opportunity, both sides, to kind of sort everything out. The other thing that's interesting is we said it before, it's kind of a brisk afternoon here. I'm still showing about 48 degrees. And just to put that in perspective, uh, four weeks ago, we were up in Loyal Sock, and it was 70 at 8 p.m. Was it four weeks ago already? Wow. Yep, we were up in, in Loyal Sock at yeah, it was 70 degrees at 8 p.m. And you're here right. we are. It's the middle of the afternoon, and it's 48. Yeah, yeah. Gotta love northeastern PA weather. But Widom to throw under pressure immediately. He's going to step up and avoid the first rusher. Now he's got some space. He's throwing it for Rasmussen, and he's going to make the catch. Wow. My goodness, what a great effort by Widom and a good job of tracking that ball by Rasmussen. It's first and goal from the seven. Yeah, and that's exactly what that was. Widom made two would-be would -be sackers miss in the backfield there and delivered a strike to Rasmussen. So now it looks like we're going with a little... Beef package, is that what we're looking at? I think it's a wildcat. Wild well, you told me about, you were yeah, talking about Yeah, sometimes you'll see Locke in that wildcat, but Ball looks like they might actually line. give it to Gazevich here. Yeah, we usually see number five, Locke, but I actually haven't seen him at all this game. Look how wide those splits are too, Jim. That's Stobo and Luke Bowes are in the backfield with Gazevich. He's going to run it, and that's not going to work with the Red Tornadoes. They've got their own beef, and Gazevich is going to end up leaving I think they're going to give him a yard for forward progress. Yeah, but Jim, it's it's an interesting setup too. They have like whole full like body splits in between the the linemen. It's it's a really strange setup that they're running, and looks like something that they're not going to continue with. Widom coming back in here now. No, you're right. You're right about Locke though, Dan. Now that you call yeah, that out, he's number five on our goal. roster. I haven't goal. seen him right. anywhere. That, so that's another. And he's actually the leading receiver. Right. So that's along with Fogelsanger. Potential challenge this uh, Panther offense is facing. But they're going to do a double reverse now, a true double reverse to Gazevich, and he's going to try to get the corner. He won't. So the Red Tornadoes do a good enough job the staying home to yeah. make sure he can't pick up all the yardage. The Let's see where they mark him at. Are they marking him out right at the one? That's going to be close, Jim. I don't know. It looked like he was out at maybe the three, mm. you, know, you know, a few yards back further than that. But you're right. That's going to be inside the one. Yeah, so it's third and goal from the one-yard line. Again, the Panthers have to find a way here to turn that turnover into points to pick up a yard on these next two plays. And, Jim, if I'm Coach Kogut right now, I'm putting, putting Wharton in the backfield, big number 44, and I'm giving him the ball right up the middle. Quick little quick hitter for a dive, but he's not even in the game right now. Well, they're going to stay in shotgun. Again, this is much like the Red Tornadoes. Widom's going to throw, and he threw Gazevich's hands. They tried to run like a quick slant there, and he, he had him, but it's incomplete. So now you've got a decision to make. What do you do on, on fourth and one? Are you going to run it, or are you going to try to throw it again? I'm, if the, the fact that you run it on third and one right. is, is uh, a little confusing, and that's... It seems like you know, sort of like a Seattle Seahawks type thing when, <laughs> when they played against the Patriots. You know, you, if you got Marshall, and, and there goes number 44 Wharton into the game. So we'll see if that neck roll can get him into the end zone. So, and again, Coach Kogut not having any timeouts to kind of talk through this one. And Widom's going to keep it on the 
And he's tackled in the backfield by Bradley. He tried to do the option. Widom put his foot in the ground, wanted to go the other way, and the Red Tornadoes turned the Panthers away. So a tough turn of events there for Bloomsburg. And Jim, that's a great job defensively by the Red Tornadoes. You're right, Bradley staying home when Wharton or when Widom decides to kind of turn back and go the opposite direction, nowhere for him to go. But just still, still very. Um, a, li a little troubled by the, the play calling there by Coach Kogan. I, I think you got enough beef, you, you got enough size on your offense that you don't, you know, you go under center and you just run two plays from inside the one yard line and try and get that in the end zone. That would have been my decision. And now the Red Tornadoes will keep it. They're going to pitch it to Steller, and Steller's in the open field already. He's moving as fast as he can. <laughs> a huge run down near midfield. They're going to mark him out of bounds right at the 50. So it's a gain of about 44 to go from the shadow of your own end zone to midfield in a single snap. Yeah, Jim, I saw Steller. Steller kind of, it looked like he was kind of setting up, trying to set up Rasmussen. Rasmussen had a, a, an angle on him from the beginning, coming from the opposite side of the field. And this time it'll be Diaz. And now Diaz has the corner, and he's a little bit of a different runner. But Rasmussen does a good job of slinging him out of bounds there. But still another first down for the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, Rasmussen's a, a cornerback. So when he's making the play, when he's making the tackles downfield like that, that's usually spells that the, the Red Tornadoes are doing a pretty good job defensively. Or offensively, I'm sorry. So again, you talked before, Dan, about three plays. Three plays ago, it was fourth and goal from the one-yard line. Yeah for the Panthers, and now it's first and 10 Red Tornadoes at the 35. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty big swing there. And Feliciano's gonna throw, and he's got Schultz, but he's gonna go for Diaz, it's high, it's long, it's incomplete. Oh, oh my goodness. A great effort there by number, by that's Whittem. Yeah, yes it is. Pass ball and incomplete. Kelly down, down in the backfield of the Red Tornadoes, so they'll tend to him for the moment. But my goodness, that was, Whittem was step for step and just got a hand in there at the end to knock the ball away from Diaz. Yeah, and that's a, that's a tough one there because it did look like Diaz had, had a step initially and then kind of just, had, as he got into the end zone, looked like he slowed down a tiny bit to wait for that ball and Whittem was able to get the hand in there and knock that one down. But, um, you know, you talked about it. Matt Kelly there down for the Red Tornadoes and hopefully... Um, it's nothing serious because he is a, a humongous part of this offensive and defensive line. And just to go back to the third third down play from the goal line for the Panthers, you referenced the um, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago where Wilson, Russell Wilson gets picked off by Malcolm Butler there. Um, and I the one thing, and I, I'm just curious if that's what's going through Coach Kogut's mind in that, that situation, the thing that I remember most about the aftermath is I don't know if it was if it was – um, Pete Carroll or, or I think Daryl Bevel was the offensive coordinator at that yeah. point where they said that third down play though that's the last chance you have for a surprise. True. Right and yeah. that's and you wonder if that's the situation there it's like alright they we're definitely going to run it right guys so let me try to sneak one in here. Yeah but that's uh, I, at the same time I, I just I don't know it, it, it's it's a interesting decision to be made there. Number 35, Matt Kelly, leaving the field for the Red Tornadoes. Matt up. Gingerly walk him off the field. So, again, hopefully, hopefully if even if he's not able to come back today, we'll be back for next week, provided the Red Tornadoes can uh, you know, hold on here. All right, so let's get a quick reset, Dan. Yeah, I just wanted to point out, Jim, Mike, Michael Keir is going to be heading in there to play in in the stead of, of, of uh, Matt Kelly. So he will be the guy there with Nestico on that right side of the offensive line. There's no shortage of big dudes no, on the right the sideline. There's, there's side definitely line. not. Definitely not. So it'll be second and 10, 635 left in the first half. 13 nothing Red Tornadoes. The ball's at the 36. Feliciano's going to keep this one himself. And he's got the edge. Now it's a foot race. Rasmussen does a good job taking angles out there. Feliciano keep fighting, get inside the 10. But if not for Rasmussen's angle, I think that's six. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, it, it, Rasmussen kind of turned Feliciano back inside to Gazevich there, and it looked like it was Gazevich and Rasmussen that uh, 
Feliciano was kind of able to split, but uh, all in all ended up making the tackle after Feliciano got a couple extra yards. So based on, looks like the ball's placed just inside the tent, so it's gonna be a goal to go situation here. And on the first play, they'll give it to Davitt. Good play by Wharton. Davitt won't pick up much more than a yard. Looks like there was a little trouble with the handoff there, Dan, I think. Yeah, yeah, there was something something going on there. And it's, it's you know, it's different playing in the in the daytime than it is at night. <laughs> it, it could could be something that they're get they're just trying to get used to, you know, the, you know, the, uh, Temperature, the, the sunlight. Feliciano pitch it out in front of David, and again, so David's gonna slip down. He'll lose a yard there, but again, trouble getting him the football. Yeah, the pitch. It looked like the pitch was a little bit out in front of him. He had a, he had a hard time kind of handling it, and then uh, when he he knew where the cutback was, but when he finally got a grasp uh, a grasp on the ball, went to make that cutback where Diaz was kind of making that block out, and stuck his foot in the ground and slipped. So this is they're going the wrong direction here. This is not good for the Red Tornadoes, the first two plays here. So now it's third and goal with the 11. It's the shotgun doubling. Diaz comes in motion. Feliciano keeping himself. He's going to bully his way in. He'll go in on his feet, ran through a couple arm tackles. So Feliciano's in from 12 yards out, and it's 19-0 Red Tornadoes. Yeah, that's a really, really good job there by Feliciano, just kind of keeping his balance and, and realizing at, at that point in time that didn't seem like the the guys in the secondary for the Panthers wanted to wrap up. They, you know, they were kind of just kind of just grasping at uh, or putting their shoulder down, trying to deliver a big hit, but they weren't wrapping up. So Feliciano was able to just bounce off and, and right into the end zone like a ping pong ball. Stellar on for the extra point. This one is up and good. Twenty to nothing, and that'll be 117 for the career. Yeah, so now he's within one of tying Sinkovich. So that's a, another thing. You know, obviously, obviously the 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 main thing that we're focused on here tonight is is getting to have another home game here next right. next Saturday um, against the winner of Troy and Sayer. But um, definitely, definitely going to be continuing to to monitor Stellar's. Uh, quest to, to catch Mike Sinkovich here. And certainly to, to the extent that we can, uh, Kelly on the sideline as well. Keep yeah, on. yeah, we definitely want to want to make sure that he's he's going to be able to at least come back next week, if not this week. And, and you know, you, you, the upside, at least for the Red Tornadoes at this point, is with a 20-0 to lead, if you can continue to, to you know, have a, a, a good run offensively and your defense com continues to play the way they've been playing, you feel pretty comfortable just telling him, hey, sit out the rest yeah. of this game and, and get healthy for next week. All right, so Stella to kick off again, Rasmussen and Gazevich back deep for the Panthers. Again, this is a Panther team that hasn't been short on opportunity today. Today, We'll see if they can capitalize. Stella's kick is going to go directly to that second line who would wisely drop back. That's Brady Haran who took it at the 30. He'll get up around the 36 before being driven out of bounds by, of course, Farinato and Spears, who I think have decided they're going to make all the tackles on kickoffs from here on out. <laughs> right, yeah, the, yeah, they did a good job there, too. Haran, uh, you're right, kind of caught off guard by that kick, but did a good job of fielding it cleanly and getting what he could instead of letting that roll through because, you know, with the, with the way the Red Tornadoes have been covering kicks this week, it's and, – and, you know, I just wanted to, to touch on something. I was a little critical of the Red Tornadoes a few weeks ago, the way that they had been covering kickoffs, and – They've done a, a, a fantastic job ever since that Loyal Sock game. I, I, don't, I think they've, they've changed things up on the kickoff, and they've done a really good job of covering kicks. With him to throw, and he's got, he had Rasmussen who wasn't looking for the football. That's the, that's the reality of that one there. It snuck up on him quick. It fell incomplete. Yeah, and I think, I don't think Stellar was looking for the football there either. I think Stellar was looking for Rasmussen and, and, and saw him coming, yeah. but didn't realize that the ball was coming as well. Well, it was the same motion. It was a swing pass to Gazevich, and that's honestly, that's where my eyes went first until Whittem decided where he was going to throw the football. Right, right. It'll be two to the right. Woodham's going to hand it to Rasmussen this time off the right side. He'll get a few. Oh, no, good run there out to about the 45. It'll bring up third and two. 
Yeah, he did a good job kind of fighting through there and, and uh, dragging a couple couple yeah. defenders there to, to get a nice little gain here. And this would be big for the Panthers if they're able to, to put a drive together and kind of get the, that last score before the half would be huge. Yeah, because they will, they'll receive the kickoff after halftime yes, as well. Yes, they will. Could be a, a, a two-possession swing if they're able to score before the half and then on their first drive in the second half. So you see on third and short what the Panthers opt to do here if they try to throw it again or just focus on picking up the first down. Well, Widom's going to run. He's going to get the first down, so a good effort there, but some confusion in the backfield. I don't know if it was a design play, if it was going to be a, a Widom run anyway after a play fake, but he faked, he tried to hand the football off to somebody yeah. that wasn't there. We'll say, we'll just say that. Yeah, I felt like I, uh, maybe it looked, seemed like he was looking to his left initially, and Shikatano came off the, the edge untouched, <laughs> and, and he was like, oh, no, and pulled it down and decided to run the other way, but, I mean, did enough to get the first down. So first and 10 from the 49 now. Panthers will have that four wide, that quad set to the field side. Woodham's going to roll that way. Under pressure, he's going to fire it hard into Rasmussen. will take a shot from Farinato, but a big reception. However, it, it does look like this is going to come back. Yeah. I I'm not oh, sure. It looks like they're talking to to the Panthers, so this might be something against the. I think it was. An, I think they were explaining to Whittem. I believe it's an ill, an uh, ineligible man downfield. Oh, okay. I think the way that they were set up, if, if I was reading the officials correctly, looked like the way they were set up is uh, 21 Kelly was covered up. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh yeah, they're moving everything back now. And that's exactly what it is. Ineligible receiver penalty called against. So that'll take him back. My goodness, it was a good pitch and catch there to, to Rasmussen, but. Yeah, it was for a first down as well. But now the ball's going to go back five yards from the initial line of scrimmage. It'll be first and 15 now from the 44. Yeah, and a little, little confusion there with the, with the lines, too. Mm -hmm. But with, with the chains, I mean, because they did it. All right, so here we go yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Same look with him on the move. Chased by Shikatano, and we'll just dump it off the sideline. A smart play by Widom to get rid of the football. Yeah, he just, he just decided to throw it out of bounds there. And, and I don't think I don't think the ball field. got back to the line of scrimmage. I think that's what's going to be the problem there, Dan. I agree. Yep, intentional grounding. And that's a loss of down, and the ball's going to be placed at the spot Panthers. there. Yep. So that's a tough one there. Again, Widom, he, he's under pressure. Nobody's open. He does, you know, he's out of the tackle box, does all the things you think to just throw the ball away. Yeah. But it's important. It's got to get back to the line of scrimmage, or else you're going to get that penalty called. Correct. Wow, they're gonna keep. Yeah, so that's gonna be, I think, five yards from the spot is the way that one works okay, out, plus okay. the loss of down. So it winds up being whew, second and very long. Is what it looks like to me. About twenty-four, I think, is what it's gonna be now. Second and a long way, either way. So now that uh, you know, after the Panthers started this drive pretty well, going in the wrong direction. Yep. So they're trying to explain. Trying to get the, get the down marker fixed there. Right, because I think the confusion is that because of the block in the back, that play was actually first down. So Correct. You yeah. do lose the down, sure, but it should only be second down. Right. And Coach Koga trying to get some explanation, too, understandably so. This is a little bit back and forth here trying to straighten this one out. Yeah, there's a lot a lot been going on here in the last last minute or two here right. of, of, of play, and, and it's kind of just been confusing all around. But I think they got it. They got it right, and it is going to be second down. So Widom in the pistol, he's going to pitch it to Rasmussen. There's a lot of space there for him, but he's going right for that corner. Rasmussen and Schultz did a good job staying home out there. And Absolutely, get maybe three yards. Yeah, that's a really good job there by Schultz. And you had Davitt chasing from the inside, um, 
but you're right. I think if he would have looked to maybe turn that inside a little earlier, he yeah. might have been able to have a little bit more success there. But you're right, went, went for the corner and wasn't able to get a whole lot because Schultz played that really, really well. So now it'll be third. Say third and about 21 now. Ball on the 37-yard line brings up a third and 21 for Bloomberg. Two and a half left in the first half. The Red Turner is already up 20. Widom's going to keep it himself. And he's going to do a good job picking anything up because we don't want to keep for all intents and purposes, he probably could have lost a handful of yards there. But it'll get across the 40. Yeah, it really didn't look like he was going to get much there but at all, but you're right. And uh, now Coach Dyer deciding to use his timeout time since out. it's going to be a, a fourth and very long so here. Half, two minutes, yeah, so the ball rests at the 42-yard line. Uh, they need to get to the 41 for a first down, so that's about a third and seven, excuse me, a fourth and 17. You can, I think, probably safely rule out any shenanigans on a punt here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'd say so. I would say you definitely could rule any of that stuff out for sure. And and given that Jones has done a pretty good job punting, it's just I'm somewhat curious if Coach Dara is going to opt to go after the punt or if he'll try to set up a return. I would... Uh, it's going to depend on how many... He's going to go after. He's got yes. Spears Spears heading up there to that front line. So I, 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 like, I like this decision, though. We've seen it throughout the season. Spears has been able to get to a lot of punts. He's gotten yeah. close. He hasn't been able to block any, but he's gotten very, very close. So I'd like I'd like to see him be able to go and yeah. get this one this time. It's funny. I was at the same mindset. I was like, well, Jones let me look for number 11, and then I'll tell you if they're going to go after it or not. They won't get there. It's a good punt by Jones. It's going to bounce past Farinato. Going to get all the way down to the 10-yard line, so a really good punt by Parker Jones. Make the Red Tornadoes go. Yeah, gonna have clock to. continues to run here. Clock needs yeah, to stop. Need to get the clock stopped. About 15 seconds ran off the clock there. And it continues to run off. So officials will have to go back to their clock to see where that needs to be reset to. Correct. But yeah, not, so the Red Tornado's got to go 90 yards in about 2 minutes and 10 seconds if they want to put another 6 on the board. Yeah, so this is going to be a... Uh, and. I mean, the Red Tornadoes have two timeouts left, and, and they have the capability of breaking off big plays yeah. pretty much at, at will at any time that they want to. Um, it's just going to be whether Coach Dara decides to um, to kind of put the ball in the air right away yeah. or if he's going to wait until you know he absolutely needs to put the ball in the air. Looks like they're going to say 207. Yeah, I think that's what, that's what or 206. 206. Yeah. It was something like that. I figured that. Ball spotted on the 10-yard line where the Red Tornado will take over. First I think with the way your defense is playing, you feel a little more comfortable throwing it from the jump, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so for sure. But at the same time, you want to make sure you have uh, good protection back there. And it's Spears. He's going to pitch it to Stellar. He's just going to get upfield and wisely get out of Stellar bounds. The Red and that's, that's your, uh, your crafty veteran out there. You know, making the right play, getting what he can get and instead of putting his shoulder down and fighting for more yards, getting out of bounds, preserving the timeouts, and getting that clock stopped. For the Red Tornadoes. And I know in some of those cases you might, you know, run a couple run plays to see if you can pick up some yards before you decide to really go for it. That's why I'm not, not totally sure what Coach Dara wants to do here. Yeah, we'll have to see. It's second and two for the time being. And they're going to give it to Farinato, and Farinato is going to follow those big red jerseys. Stellar out there as well, and he'll get a first down and make his Farinato way out of bounds. He'll be at the 23-yard line, the so down. two plays, 13 yards, and oddly enough, about 13 seconds. Yeah, and, and again, that's a, that's a good job there by Farinato, just you know, knowing where the marker was, getting the first down, and then he saw Whitten, Whittem coming from the from the inside, and he decided, all right, I'm just going to step out of bounds. Stop the clock, preserve another timeout, and just keep the keep the ball rolling here. We're, they could they could piecemeal their way down the field here and, and, and get in the end zone just by doing this. That was a little high snap. Stellar does a good job corralling a tough pitch, but this time he won't get the edge, so he'll be tackled 
inside the hash marks. No timeout from the Red Tornadoes. Coach Derek just wants to go tempo. Yeah, and that one's that one's tough there. Uh, the the snap was high, and that's a timing that's a timing play with that pitch. See Feliciano grabbing his helmet, so you're curious if that's going to change anything. Stellar will be tackled in the backfield by oh. Fogelsanger. Yeah, that's a nice play there by Fogelsanger too. Did a nice job, kind of knifing through the backside there. So it's going to bring up third down. And the Red Tornadoes use their first timeout. Second timeout, excuse me. Yeah, so now, now we're going to have to, uh, I think now we're going to see the Red Tornadoes start to put the ball in the air. I'm, I, I'm not sure if they're going to bring Feliciano back in to allow him to do that, if they're going to run with Spears in there, because you see Feliciano in the huddle right now, um, right next to Spears. So we're going to have to see. Yeah, we'll see. We will, I, It'll be pretty clear, I think, right away when they get out there, right? Like, we've seen that throughout the season. Um, we see what they do with the tight ends. Again, one thing that to note, again, the Red Tornado is not having Verano out there. Yeah. Verano certainly another pass catcher, another uh, good target for Feliciano. He himself, he's the second, actually, he's the leading receiver in terms of receptions. He's got 11 yeah. for 150. But, but you think about it, too. You see Feliciano and Spears going out there. So Spears... Not only the, the, the quarterback, but also a pass catcher. So Stellar comes out, Feliciano goes in. They're going to spread things out here. They're, this is this is a, a throwing set from it's, the Red Tornadoes. It's third and five. Ball They'll stay with the double tight end in Chicatano and Schultz. Widener will be with Feliciano in the backfield. But Verano to the field, excuse me, Fernando to the field side, Spears. And Feliciano is actually going to run it. They brought Spears in motion. And so two things, the Red Tornado is going to pick up the first down, but then there's some extracurricular yeah, there on the sideline against the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, it looks like there's going to be an extra extra 15 here. We're just going to see what way it goes. A little discussion. I think it's going to move the Red Tornadoes in the direction they want to go. Yes, it is. Red yep. ball, personal foul penalty against Bloomberg. So that'll be another 15 yards that's going to bring the football right up around midfield. Cross midfield, actually. It'll be the 49-yard line. So they'll be in plus territory now. Again, a minute 20 with a timeout. Red Torino certainly, certainly capable of scoring. Put another one on the board here before the half. Yeah, that, that one there, that's a... That's a tough one. That one hurts uh, the Panthers for sure because that, that's going to move the Red Tornadoes big time. Feliciano is going to keep it himself on a draw, but the Panthers are ready for it. He's going to lose two yards. Feliciano Coach Dyer doesn't want to use that timeout just yet. He's trying to get everybody up, trying to get everybody up on the line as fast as possible. Result of the play brings up a second and eleven. Feliciano to throw now. He's going to throw a quick out to Schultz, who will Feliciano's make the reception and 15, pop James out of bounds. Schultz. So good job there to get the clock bounds. stopped. It'll be third and seven. But now, again, Jim, you know, we talked about it. This, uh, These red tornadoes, that you know, they kind of tried to do the little, do the uh, the quarterback draw. They ran the sweep of Feliciano, all that stuff, which which worked out well. But but that that quarterback draw kind of hurt him there because yeah. it looks like the the Panthers are just selling out to to get pressure on Feliciano, so he's really not going to have any running room. He's going to have to get the ball out and get it out quick. Feliciano going to throw and he does to Spears and it'll be incomplete. So now it's fourth and seven. Again, certainly not a spot that the Red Tornadoes would punt from. No, um, so definitely this is, not. You know whether it's a minute left in the first half or admitted into the first half, the Red Tornadoes are likely going for it here. Yeah, I would say so. And uh, a little confusion here again. But looks like, and See, and now it looks like the Red Tornadoes, again, if they, if they do get this first down, they want to save that timeout. So the, the play clock is winding down here, so they want to get this off and get it off quickly. Feliciano rolls to his left. He's only got Farinato out there. Farinato's open, but it's incomplete. So now it'll be first and 10. Panthers at the 46, at their own 46 yard line. So get another shot here again while Panthers haven't, don't have much to show off, show for it offensively through the first, you know, 13, excuse me, 23 minutes of the, 
of the game, they have shown an ability to at least get a receiver deep. Yeah, and, and that's that's something that the, the Tornadoes are really going to have to be prepared for because with, you know, with under a minute here and no timeouts, I, I don't see any, you know, there, there's really no reason for the Panthers to not make an effort here. You know, right. you know what I mean? Throw it deep, let Whittem throw it as far as he can. You know, try and get somebody on yeah. a quick out, get him to right. the sideline. What do you got, coach? You got a flea flicker? You got a hook and ladder? You got a, a we, halfback pass? We already saw a halfback pass right. out of him today. Twins right for Whittem. And he's under pressure from Nestico. Whittem trying to direct traffic. He gets around Davit, and he throws it oh. right into Diaz's belly, but it falls incomplete. So it's going to be second and ten. Yeah, and that play actually ran off ten seconds there. With him just doing everything he can to, to extend the play. He did a good job of it. But, yeah. you know, uh, after all the pressure from uh, Davit and Nestico, he kind of finally had to force, a, force the ball in there. And you're right, he threw it right into the stomach of Diaz. And unfortunately, Diaz couldn't pull it in. But that's going to have new life here. Again, wasn't a whole lot of uh, nothing too fancy on that one. Just kind of what we've seen before. It looks like the Panthers might be opting to keep an extra running back, and they'll give it to Rasmussen. So they may be content to take this take this to the half. I think. I think that's what it's going to be. They don't have to run another play, and it doesn't look like Whittem in any hurry to get a play from Coach Colgate. No, I mean again, you want points. If you're the Panthers, of course, but you also have to look at this like three of the Red Tornado drives in this half ended either, either a turnover or a turnover on downs. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like they're looks like Coach Kogut playing playing a little bit of the long game here. I'm not sure if he was going to try and see if the Red Tornadoes would hustle off the field there and be able to run a play, get a penalty, something like that. But now it looks like everybody's content to take it to the half. And that's what we'll do. The we hit zeros here, so the first half is officially ended. And after one half of play here at the Silver Bowl in the District 4 Class 2A quarterfinals, the Mount Carmel Red Tornadoes are on top of the Bloomsburg Panthers 20 to nothing. We'll be back in just a minute with stats and the second half. Stay with us.
Led on the field by drum major Gabrielle Kahneman. Flag captains are Amaya Bobrowski and Emily Britt. And rifle captain is Megan Matakaita. This year's staff includes Bernard Seller, director. Erica Nestico, assistant director. Bernie Nestico, drum instructor. John Jacoby, assistant to the band director. Jennifer Mellon, color guard instructor. Chris Seller, music and marching instructor. Linda Haas, assistant color guard instructor. Luke Derrick, music and marching instructor. And Kelly Lucas, music and marching instructor. We would like to thank Cameron Getty, Marissa Matakaitis, Andrew Rooney, Ryan Green, the MCA school board, and especially the MCA band parents for their continued invaluable support. The band would like to recognize the late Paul Prosimicic, legendary MCA Mounties director who wrote the brass and woodwind arrangements for portions of our show. Now we invite you to sit back and enjoy the 2021 edition of the Mount Carmel Area High School Big Red Band.
be doing the winning ticket numbers shortly for both. 50-50 will be coming up first. Hello and welcome back to the Silver Bowl, the site of the PIA District 4 Class 2A quarterfinal matchup between the visiting Bloomsburg Panthers and the Mount Carmel area Red Tornadoes. The Red Tornadoes uh, jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead in the first half. And Dan, I think courtesy of Jose Gonzalo, we've got some stats to kind of paint a better picture of exactly what happened in the first half. Yes, we do, Jim. So, so we'll start off with the Red Tornadoes numbers here. 27 carries for 266 yards. Oof. Three of eight passing for 27 yards. That puts them at 293 total yards of offense here with 12 first downs. And then on the other side, the Panthers, 16 rushing attempts for 29 yards. And uh, with them tonight, it's 5 of 15 for 60 yards, which puts them at 89 total yards of offense and five total first downs. Okay, so so before this game started, or at least as it was starting, I think we talked about uh, some things that you thought needed to happen on both sides for teams to be successful. So how did each team kind of go about matching up against the keys that you set for them? Yeah, I mean, looking at, looking at Mount Carmel, it seems like um, they've pretty much checked all their boxes uh, in the, that first half. They've dominated up front, which has, has led them to that 266 rushing yards in the first half, which means they are well on their way to that 300-yard mark yeah. that uh, is kinda, has kind of been the threshold for them for success this year. Um, and they've definitely forced Bloom to throw. With, only, with uh, Bloomsburg only having 29 rushing yards in the first half, um, they had to put the ball in the air 15 times with only uh, minimal success. Um, Bloomsburg, they, they've, they're they working on a passing game. I wouldn't say they've developed it yet. Um, they have created turnovers. They had two turnovers there in the first half. They were not able to capitalize on either one of them. Um, and they haven't played entirely clean themselves. They had that fumble. Um, Widom's made a couple dangerous throws that could have turned into more turnovers for the Red Tornadoes. So it's it's um, it's going to be a big, big drive here for the Panthers to kind of get started and maybe put some points on the board here to start the second half. And we'll see where it starts. Stellar's kick is high and short. Rasmussen's going to have a drop in front of him. We'll pick it up at the 13. He's going to move in and out, but the Red Tornadoes do a good job covering. 22, David Rasmussen on the return. He'll get across right the three, 25 Davis, to the, the 27, and I, I couldn't totally see, but I got a hunch Farinato. It looked like he was the last one up off the pile. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost positive that was Farinato down there making that tackle again. So he's, uh, I'd say, probably, what, three for four now, it seems <laughs> like. I, I think they're, he's been on, in on three uh, kickoff tackles. So he's he's doing a nice job out there. But, um, you know, again, we're going to see what what kind of adjustments Coach Kogut has made in the, in the locker room here at halftime. On the season, Farinato only 10 tackles off the lead, so he's trying to make a push however he can. Whittam's pass batted down by Nestico. So yeah. good job there pass, by the big man getting his hands up. And, the and Jim, we know Cole Stobo. He's a big kid. He does a good job. Um, he's their, their leading tackler on defense, and he does a good job offensively on that offensive line, but that is a, a tall task to, to block Nick Nestico out there, who's just a, he's a, he's, you know, mo just like most of the, the, offensive and defensive linemen of the Red Tornadoes. They're just men amongst boys, it seems like. With him in the pistol, he's got Wharton behind him. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. He brings Kelly in motion. Excuse me, that's Rasmussen. And he's going to hand it to Wharton, who's got nowhere to go. Stellar hits him first. It looks like Kellen Geary in there on, on the help coming over the top. He's got a little over a yard. It'll be third and eight. Yeah, and again, now, now the, you know, we talked about it. The, Panthers are going to be forced to put the ball in the air. And, and um, one thing we didn't see, I mean, we saw it a little bit from Game the, one the Tornadoes nine in the first half. We need to see more of it is the pressure on the quarterback. They've gotten pressure, but Woodham's been able to kind of evade it. Oh, there's the pressure again, and he's going to drop deeper. He's going to jump throw. And Rasmussen comes all the way back to make the catch. So an unbelievable conversion on third and eight. And Jim, that's a tough one there because I really don't know if that, you know, that's one of those situations where it looked like the referee was right on top of it there where Whittem, um let that ball go from. But it looked, he had to be out of bounds when he let that one go. Uh, or at least that's what the Red Tornadoes are probably thinking. But no whistle. 
Um, he throws it, throws a punt up there, and Rasmussen does a really good job of adjusting to it. And that's tough. It's tough for the defensive backs to, to adjust to that as well. Yeah, when you throw that short and Rasmussen comes back, I mean, that's not, that, that's not an easy um, adjustment for any defensive back to make coming back towards the ball. No, definitely not. Whittem's going to throw again. He's going to float it, and he's got Haran in and out of his hands. He had Brady Haran open and falls incomplete. He did, and he, he was open on a look, what looked like a corner route. Um, did a nice job of making a break and, and getting to the sideline. And Whittem, I mean, we talked about it. Whittem ha doesn't have great, doesn't have any, any like spectacular numbers since he's become the starting quarterback here this year. But he is, is even even when we saw him his first week as the starting quarterback, he made some some improbable throws. Like yeah. some, and, and he, he puts the, the ball in some tight windows. And not to mention, like we said before, missing his top two targets in Locke and Fogelsanger. Yeah. And now he's under pressure again, and he's going to, somehow elude the rush and he'll throw it incomplete. Now what I was watching there, Dan, we fast ball is incomplete. there was a block somebody tried to make. Yeah, it looked like headed headed towards Chicatano there, right? Yeah. yeah. Back towards their back towards the line of scrimmage, back towards the the opposing goal line. So that you see that called sometimes, not in that case, but fortunately uh, Chicatano's all right. Yeah, it looked like actually Shikatano kind of just shook that one off. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't. It didn't even. Kid. Yeah, it didn't even look like it really affected him. So, um, <laughs> would have crumbled a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. It definitely <laughs> would have. But you're right, and I think that's probably why we didn't see a flag. Third and ten again. Whittem being pursued and somehow eluding the rush. Nestico's got him dead to right. Nope. Whittem somehow he's going to throw it. And Parker Jones is going to make the catch in bounds. He's tiptoeing on that sideline. He'll get the foot in, catch it all hands. And again, a third and eight plus, 10 plus conversion based on just an unbelievable effort by Whittem. And, and I mean, if you're on, if you're on this, this defensive line, it, as you see Nick Nestico coming off the, off the, the field here just to get a rest, he, you've got to be exhausted. Because um, he's he's in pursuit, he does a good job. He breaks down. It seems like there's no way that Widom's going to be able to get the ball away, and he somehow does. Widom's about as slippery a quarterback as we've seen all year, and now he's got some time to throw. And Gazevich is going to step in front of the defender and make the catch so for the touchdown from 29 yards out. So it's 20 to six now. And they're going for two, Jim. That was a, was a, an immediate decision there by Coach Kogut. You saw the offense coming out, and uh, or the coaches coming out on the field with the with the old two set up. But maybe, maybe not, because they've got Cisse Dorschler out there, who is their place kicker. So, all right, I'm wrong. Dorschler on for the point after attempt. Torch on to attempt the extra point. It's a good snap. It's a good hold. It's a good kick. Kick is good. And it took a minute and 54 seconds, seconds into the third quarter the third for the quarter. Panthers to cut the lead from 20 to 13. Again, a drive almost entirely moved forward by improbable third down conversions by the Panthers and then a great effort by Gazevich to come back to the football and muscle his way into the end zone from 29 yards out. Yeah, because that that one that touchdown Back, play there 15, was was one of the balls that that Whittem didn't really put in in the best possible spot. Ticket. That that ball was um, the Eight, the five, three, defender was on the one, inside four, hip six. and the ball was inside yeah, 50, of Gazevich. And Gazevich came underneath eight, five, three, and made a really nice catch. One, but four, um, you're right. This is a it's a it's a tough tough draw there for the Red Tornadoes. You know, after getting so much pressure and doing a really good job there. Um, Eight, five, defensively three, putting pressure one, on Whittem, but six. somehow it was not enough. Game ball. Winner shortly. So now if there's any consolation for the Red Tornado sideline, it's that you're likely to get the ball, <laughs> you should get the ball back here and have a chance to go back and, and kind of do what you do best, and that's run the football. Yeah, especially, you know, plenty of time on, on, the, on the clock. Now you're definitely going to see that, that rushing attack back out there. 
And there's that kind of ground ball kick that we've seen from Jones that we saw in, in practice, Dan, in early time. And Spears has trouble fielding it, which is the whole point of that kick, right? I, absolutely, yeah. You, you kick it, it's like a knuckleball going down there. There's no real way to, to, to pick it up cleanly. And you're right, after Spears had trouble handling it for a little bit, decides to just kneel on top of it right. and, 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 you know, just concede. Just, we're going to just <laughs> take the ball right here, you know? <laughs> but, it's, but it's the smart play there by Spears instead of trying to pick that up and run. So the Red Tornadoes are going to go out and got some changes on that offensive line. Again, we talked about Tank Kelly, who's on the sideline. As this is Farinato now, he'll get up Farinato over the 25. The the it looks like Nestico, I think, Stop is still on the sideline as well. So in addition to Keir, it's like Kenny Wetzel's in there as well, Dan. Rightfully so, though. Uh, Nestico kind of deserves a, a break a after, <laughs> after all that chasing of Whittem he did on the, on the last drive on defense. Um, you're right, that is Kenny Wetzel in there. So they bump Geary out to the guard on the right side there with Keir. And Feliciano will keep this one himself. He'll stay on his feet, tumble forward. It'll be a first down for the Red Tornadoes out to the 34-yard line. Picking up the first yeah, down. That's a, that's a good run there by Feliciano. Just kind of knowing where the sticks are and, and, and falling forward there for the first down. I'd like to see him throw it again. Yeah, yeah, um, but at the same time, no need to at this point. You're having a lot of success on the ground. You're just going to keep keep rocking with it, I think. Pitch it to Stellar. He's going to try to use the forearm, but Vogelsanger makes a good tackle. Stellar will get a yard. Yeah, and that's that, that big robo arm he's throwing out there to, to – uh, <laughs> Knock the <laughs> knock him down, Fogelsanger. But Fogelsanger says, "I got a club too." <laughs> it's the, the the battle of the uh, the injured arms there. And Fogelsanger won that one. Fogels we talked about Stobo before for the Panthers. Fogelsanger is actually the second leading tackler tackler coming into today with 72. Yeah. Now Feliciano keeping himself, and he's going to run through a couple arm tackles. He's got one guy to miss, and my goodness, give Rasmussen credit. He's been the last line of defense a lot tonight, and he seems to always make the tackle. Yeah, yeah, he, he has been. He's been very solid. He, it's, he uh, doesn't miss tackles in open field, no. which is pretty impressive. Nonetheless, it's a huge run by Feliciano all the way down to about the 35-yard line, which winds up being a gain of about 30. Yeah, it's, 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 been a, it's been a huge game there, or a huge game there by... Feliciano, really nice run. This time it'll be Stellar. He's going to get to the outside. But the Panthers do a good job Stella stringing that out. Gazevich and Kelly push him to the sideline. Yeah, I think he's going to get a couple, but not ma not much. He got five somehow. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That, that was a really good job there by Stellar because uh, that play was designed to go up the middle. Right. And there was nothing there up the middle. He did a good job bouncing that out and getting whatever he could. I think one thing we can say with, with certainty, while I'm not the best at math, I think the Red Tornadoes have eclipsed the 300-yard mark. Yeah, Based yeah, they definitely they have. they were to start the half. Yeah, they, needed, they only needed 34. There's Feliciano. That's going to be a tough three or four he picks up there. Feliciano and a keeper. Actually, two only they're going to give him. Yeah, so again, you know, they're going to be in a third down situation, but this this now now this looks more like the uh, Red Tornadoes of old, this uh, staying on schedule Yeah, that I talk about a lot. Just staying on schedule. you got a third and manageable here um, as you're moving the ball yeah, downfield. So you're this is where you want to be at if you are in this Red Tornado offense. And it's Feliciano again up the middle. First down, he'll roll. He'll roll, actually, because he rolled on the Panthers' back, so he's going to get inside the 15 to the 14. Yeah. So it'll be a gain of 14. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good pickup there. Feliciano doing, uh, you know, handling most of the work here. Stellar doing the, the heavy lifting, well, ma making the hard runs, runs but Feliciano making the big ones. This time it's Farinato now, and he's going to try to get that corner. He cuts back inside, and he stumbles Four a bit. Looks Farinato like he might have had Perry. a lane, but that blade of grass. Oh, and he's going to 
Farinata's going to be stay down on this one, so it'll be 10 to 2. Yeah, and that's a, that's, that's a tough one there for the Big Red. It seems like they've had a, a little bit of issues this game with some, some guys getting a little dinged up. And, um, you know, you look there, you see Garrett Verano with his helmet on, heading, heading towards the coaching staff. He has been uh, chomping at the bit to get out there. He went down last week, and uh, we haven't seen him on offense or defense. We've only seen him out there to hold. Um, but he looks like he's chomping at the bit to get in the game as well. But I think right now it's going to be Diaz to, to spell Farinato. So, again, while we have a little break in the action here, again, we want to remember to just, if you get the opportunity, give a phone call, 570-339-1500. Find ways to donate to the cause here to make sure that we can get back on the air uh, for next week. And, you know, if, if next week goes well for the following week and so on and so forth, so we can kind of keep all that all that moving here. Um, the other thing we always want to just talk about is we want to talk about Think Big for a second. Again, remember, Think Big Committee just wants to thank the community for everything they've done over the years. Um, due to COVID-19 restrictions, they're unable to host the annual dance marathon event this year. But through small efforts, the community can still continue to give back in a big way. If you have the means to do so, please text the letters MCA to 570-600-6123. Again, if you have the means to do so, text MCA to 570-600-6123 to make a donation to the cause. Any donation, regardless of amount, is appreciated. Think Big is a nonprofit organization that provides financial support to families of children who are currently battling cancer. Thank you for your support as they'll get Farinato up and start Before the ginger walk the to trail. the sideline. Yeah, and it is going to be Diaz in there in the stead of, of uh, Farinato. So now it looks to, it looks like this this Red Tornado uh, offense is kind of being piecemealed together. You got Nesico and Kelly here on the sideline. Um, Farinato's coming to the sideline here as well. Um, but again, they, they but they continue to move the ball. You know, it's it's right. uh, it's impressive. But um, just a, a quick update: this, this game is not going to affect either team out here on the field right now, the Panthers or Mount Carmel. But the other game right now, I believe it's the the four and five game. Sure. The, the f number four South William Sport Mountaineers against the number five Wellsboro Hornets. Currently in the third quarter, South William Sport is up 28-7. Um, okay. So that's uh, one of those teams will be playing the winner of the Southern Columbia and Line Mountain game next week. So the winner of that game will be traveling to Southern Columbia, or Line Mountain will be traveling there. And the Red Tornadoes are going to give it to Stellar, and he's in. So from five yards out, it'll be 26-7 right now with another PAT to come. Yeah, and this one uh, carrying some weight here for, for Stellar, so we'll see if, if he can punch it through. But um, nice, nice job there by Stellar, punching that one into the end zone. Uh, we're going to see, uh, like you said, this is going to be a, a big one here. And, uh, gives him a, a, extends this to a three-score lead again. It's a good snap and a good hold, and the kick is up, and it's good. So with that, good. Julian Steller has now tied Mike Zinkovich for the most extra points made in a career at Mount Carmel with 118. Yeah, so that's a that's a that's a big one there. So the next one, Jim, will be the one to keep an eye on. Um, you're right; he he tied Sinkovich now. So the next one, that's going to be one of those footballs you want to take home with you. You know. <laughs> All right. So 6:36 left in the third quarter. The Red Tornadoes started the half with a 20-point lead, gave up a score the first of the game to the Panthers, but now. We took that 20-point lead here, 27-7. From a scoring standpoint, we've got a one-yard plunge by Stellar started everything off. And Feliciano threw the 17-yard touchdown pass to Schultz. Feliciano had a 12-yard run by himself, for himself, I should say. Uh, he had the Panther score in there, which was the 29-yard pitch and catch from Widom to Gazevich. And then Stellar's five-yard run there. That's how we got to 27-7. 
in the third quarter. Not totally unlike the 28-7 in the third quarter you just talked about up in South Williamsburg. Right, right. right. Yeah. Um, but again, we're going to see now, like, like we talked Center. about it, a couple, couple red tornadoes a little dinged up here. So we're going to have to see what this defense looks like. Um, missing a lot of guys from the defensive backfield, the defensive line. Um, but we're going to see somebody different making a tackle right. on the kickoff, too. And it's Belichick. Rasmussen on the return for Bloomsburg. Rasmussen will take this, take it over the 30 yard line. Take it Red down Tornadoes. by number seven. Belichick. Matt Belichick Matt there. Belichick. Matt Sorry. Belichick. Yeah, Matt. Num number one is, is Chase Belichick. They, they, um, you know, we, we got to. We gotta identify which gotta one is which. Right, or yep. You gotta specify. Um, but now it looks like, looks like we're gonna see number one Chase Belichick in that defensive line. backfield, Patrick along with number yeah. seven Matt, Matt Belichick. Belichick right. <laughs> with Fernando and now Spears on the sideline as well. Yeah. So they're gonna slide Feliciano back to a corner. With him to throw. Quick. We'll see, was it was it caught? Yep, they're gonna say Jones got his arms underneath it, so he made the catch at the 35. And Wait that's a tough one Jordan there Jones. for Diaz to cover. He came up like a bat out of heck there going after that ball and did a good job of getting hands on Jones right away, but wasn't able to get a hand in there and knock it down. It's like Wetzel's in there defensively as well, Dan. Yeah. On the line for the Red Tornadoes. Widom's going to throw, and he's got Gazevich. Good tackle made by Davitt, but it'll be another Panther Gazevich. first down, and Spears will head back Top in. Three, Thomas Davitt for the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, and that's going to spell Matt Belichick, leave Chase in there, and Feliciano's going to bump back to safety. That's kind of cool for a minute, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the Belichick's running the safeties back there. Widom's got four wide, and Wharton behind him. He's going to throw again. At this time, it's a little sweep out to Wharton, and Davitt does a great we job in open complete. field making the tackle. Wharton will get tackle back to the line Davitt of scrimmage and no further. That is. That's a very good play there by, by Davitt. Just did a really good job of uh, breaking down and giving nowhere, uh, Wharton nowhere to go. Lost a one on the play. Brings up a second and 11 for Bloomsburg. Ball at the 47. Second and 11 again, four wide. This time with him in the sidecar rather than behind, or excuse me, Warren in the sidecar rather than behind Widom. And Widom's gonna go upfield this time. And he's gonna make a couple red shirts miss. He'll get a first down. So again, yeah. Widom continues with just great individual Bloomberg. efforts Stop to move those chains for the David Panthers. Yeah, and it seems as though there's nobody that has we been able to get, you're, you're right, talking about how slippery Widom is. There's nobody that's been able to, uh, they've all, the entire defensive line, and the pass rushers, they've all gotten pressure, but nobody has been able to, to get a hold of Widom in the backfield there. The Red Torino defensive line, it's, it's Wetzel's kind of nose tackle, and you got the here in Chicatano at the more traditional defensive tackles, and Schultz and Bradley are, are DNs there. But with the way, how wide the Panthers get at times kind of forces them both out. And trouble with the snap. Now they're going to go quarterback pass, and Rasmussen's open in the middle of the field, and he's going to score. It's going to be a Panther touchdown, a broken play into a halfback pass from 40, excuse me, 58 yards out. Savage, yeah, wow. That's a that's a really well thrown ball there, and a good job of of hanging in there and hanging on to it. He kind of got lost in there. It seemed like there was no nobody covering him, and made a nice catch. My goodness, that's the second that Rasmussen has caught inside the ten in traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and he's he's definitely not not a doesn't get nervous when he hears the footsteps. <laughs> Dorchler's kick is no good. Kick is no it will good. stay 27-13 with 4.04 left in the, the third, third quarter. quarter. My goodness, Dan. Dan I, the first half, Bloomberg let's be honest, Panthers probably 13. wasn't the most exciting football anybody's ever watched. But uh, no. the first eight minutes of the third quarter certainly has been. Yes, it, it, it definitely has been. We've had uh, you know four drives, four scores um, pretty quickly here. 
And now the Red Tornadoes uh, got, got to do a little soul searching on their the defensive side of the ball. Um, they've got to find a way to kind of shut down this passing attack that uh, the Panthers have, have found. It almost feels a little bit like kind of up in Loyal Sock, right? Yeah, yes it does. Where and, that and third quarter was just wild. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it, it's a tough one for, for the Big Red because, you know, we talked about we talked about it during that Loyal Sock game that, you know, now now people have film of this, and that was kind of the first time that we had seen that Big Red Here's defense the, uh, really exposed. Um, and it's that that's exactly what they're going with here. It seems like the Panthers know that they're a little susceptible to uh, giving up some some big plays in the passing game, and that's what they're going with. And Jones is going to try an onside kick. And they're going to have it, Jim. I but think it didn't gonna go be 10 yards, though. Onside I think they're going to call an illegal touching the there on the Panthers. It looked like the Red Tornadoes kind of stepped forward like they were going to try to make a play on the ball early. Yeah. But I, I still think the Panthers beat them there. I have to agree with you. There are too many flags thrown too quickly. Yeah, the, I saw some one of the referees signal red tornado ball. So, um. so again, and Coach Kogut is going to try to get an understanding here because, again, it it was really close. Yeah. Really close, not just to make going 10 yards, but to the red tornadoes touching the football and making it live as well. Right. Okay, so, so the Red Tornadoes must have ultimately wound up on top of the football. Right. Regardless. Right. Yeah. Against Bloomberg. Yeah, that's one of those uh, tough ones. But it looked like the Penalty signal block in the back. But, but I'm, I'm assuming that's the and same call yeah. for uh, illegal field, touching. First and ten, big red. But we'll have to. Now we'll, we'll see what the Red Tornadoes decide to go with here. We've got Davitt in the backfield there, along with Diaz still at that wing spot with Farinato out. And it'll be Diaz. And he's in the open field and Diaz is gone. Diaz from 50 yards out. My goodness, Dan, that was a, that that was was a cut and a shoulder shake and that was all anybody saw of him. And that was very, very quick there, Jim. Very Ooh. quickly. My goodness, that young man. Wow, that's, <laughs> I don't have a whole lot else to say. No, no, you're right. And and I really thought that that was going to be the play there. It looked like uh, the Panthers had some some penetration. It looked like they were going to stop that one up in the backfield. And I was going to say, wow, this is the first time we've seen Diaz get stopped for, you know, less than less than an 8, 10-yard gain. And no, he, uh, he, he decides to take it long. Snap. Hold, kick, no good. So have to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, but uh, the, the way this quarter, the quarter has gone, don't think it'll be too much longer, Jim. It doesn't seem that way, at least. And you could see Stellar is a little frustrated with himself there. Didn't get a good, good one off, um, but got to head back out there and do the kickoff here now. See what the deal is. Well, I think like with anybody, that's it's hard to not have that in the back of your head. Oh, for right? sure, that yeah. That that's where you are. So you almost wonder, you know, for the Red Tornadoes at least especially, you want to see him get that this week so yeah. that it can be over. Right. right. Get, get over that hump and then, and then from then on it's it's not going to it's not going to matter. You know what I mean? It's just going to be him extending his lead at that point. Wellsboro 7. So again, Interesting situation here. The other, the other uh, just point of conversation, I guess, Dan, to, to call out is so that's Diaz has a 50 yard run there. We know what happened earlier in the District quarter that, that long drive the Red Tornadoes had all on the ground. Yeah. I mean, the Red Tornadoes got to be up around 400 yards rushing again. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're definitely uh, getting close to if they have not eclipsed that mark yet. They've definitely eclipsed the 300. You're right about that. Stellar's kick will go out of bounds, so we'll see what kick goes out Coach Kogut opts to do this time. And it looks like they're bringing the kick return team. I think he learned from last time around that uh, he's just going to take the penalty yardage and yeah. go from there. Take the ball to 35 and be done. Well, and honestly, with the way your offense has been going lately, uh, let's get him the ball. Right? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's I, I agree. Moving. That's a very... 
Very good idea. So we'll see. Again, trying to look at that red tornado defensive line. Balls on 35, Panthers take over. Tano, it's Keir, and it's, it's Geary, I think it Yeah, it is, like. it is Geary, that's 58 out there at the nose. He's trying to see if that was an eight or a zero before. Woodham's gonna throw it quick to Rasmussen and fall incomplete second and 10. Jim, I think, I mean, it's, I'm not sure if it's just the setup for these, uh, for the Red Tornadoes, but it looks like they're, the safeties are playing at their normal depth, and they're playing the number two receivers, the, the inside receivers when they go four wide. So really, the, um, Widom's just finding these guys on short underneath routes before they even get to the defender. So I'm surprised to not see the, yeah. the defensive backfield play a little bit more press. We got a double stack here. And it looks like, are the, are the ends, Dan, are they splitting the difference? And we'll get a flag here for an illegal motion against the, the, flag on the, field. the Panthers. When, when they set up again, watch where Schultz and Bradley are lining up. In some cases, it almost looks like they're splitting the difference between the stack and the tackle. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're, maybe uh, Coach Dyer is running a cover two here, the, you know, with the safeties covering deep halves and sending the defensive ends out to the uh, out to the flats. Penley will bring up a second and 15. Here will come out, Moser goes in. I told you I thought I saw a zero after the five somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was just on the sideline, right. and, and now he's now he's in there. But yeah, it, it does look like they're kind of they're kind of flexing out the defensive ends, and then they're going out to the flat, play that underneath route. They're gonna sit there, and that one will sail high at Jones. So it'll be third and fifteen now, back at the thirty after the illegal motion penalty and the incomplete pass. Yeah, and and this might be a. A wrinkle that Coach Dara has thrown in here because we don't normally see Coach Dara's defensive backfield play right. anything but man to man coverage. Um, you know, over the years, that's that's pretty much all we've seen, and we've seen some very good corners play against some very tough receivers in man to man and and, and hold their own. Yeah. So maybe just the the uh, the success that the Panthers are having, you maybe throw in this wrinkle, play a little zone. With him under pressure again, he's looking somewhere to throw it. He's going to throw it for Gazevich. Gazevich is going to make the reception, but I think he's out of bounds. Yeah. He is, yes. Yeah, so he hauled the football in, but wasn't he able to get his foot in bounds. He's going to protest his case a little bit there, yeah. but I think he was pretty, pretty far over the end line. Yeah, yeah, it looked like he was pretty well out of bounds there, and this is going to be. They're gonna Not sure what's going on with the with the chains here. Or I think they just pass set the ball in incorrectly. Yeah, yeah, they did. So here we go. Again, fourth and 15 now from the 30. Off to punt. Here it's a low snap. Jones does a good job fielding that. It's a nice punt. It's going to be in the direction of Spears. It's going to bounce once, bounce twice, bounce a third time. Spears picks it up. But a nice tackle made by number seven. That's Fogelsanger. Make sure Spears couldn't go anywhere. It'll be first and 10 red tornadoes at the 20. That was a real nice punt. And, they, and they, Spears kind of let that bounce until the, the Panthers got there and then tried Spears to make somebody turn. somebody miss. But wasn't full in Fogelsanger. You're right. He made a good tackle there. Um, but that's a big stop there for the red tornadoes after giving up two back-to-back -back drives with points. Yeah, and so another good thing to see there, Dan, is um, Nestico's back Ball in there for the Red Tornadoes, which Red goes to your point before that it was probably just a blow, just a little rest before. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, he's, he's been running all over the field on the defensive side. And Feliciano's going to keep this himself, and he's going to do a Feliciano. front flip there. He's going to get up Brought and literally upended by Fogelsanger. He'll wind up on his back, but fortunately he's okay. Gain of one brings up a second, second and nine. nine. Yeah, and that's a... That's a good job there defensively by the Panthers. That's the first time we've seen that that uh, run by Feliciano really not net a, a big game. Yeah. It won't be too long before we try to get uh, Diaz on the edge again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Can't do it every play, but you could do it most plays, and, and it's going to work. This time they'll fake it, and that's enough to give Feliciano some time. Now he's got some room. Kelly slips which gives Feliciano an opportunity to pick Feliciano. up more yards. On the run we get a the first tornadoes. down out across the 35 to the 37. Yeah, that's a good job there by Feliciano, just kind of realizing that it, he was feeling that pressure coming from the backside and 
pulling that one down and realizing he could get the first down with his legs. It's a good job there. And that's where it actually it, it kind of seems line. like it works first out ten, because Diaz ten. is going that way. Feliciano's first look almost seemed like it was to dump it out to Diaz. And yeah. then looking that way is, is what alerted him to the pressure coming because other, other way, that's his blind side and you yeah. can take a shot. Right. Snap to the up man. Widener now. He's in the open field. Widener's going to get inside the red, excuse me, the Panthers. I'm only going to mark him down because he got thrown right, forward a little bit. 32, it looks like. 32. So a huge run there. Yeah, that's a really good job. I didn't know who had the ball there until I saw Widener <laughs> come out the middle with it, you know, run, running down the middle of the field. That action in the backfield makes that whole play work, and, and they do a really good job of selling those fakes. And, and uh, you know, you think Feliciano got the snap, and he didn't. <laughs> the ball didn't even touch his hands. This time he does get the snap, and he gives it to Davitt. Davitt's going to. Davitt on the carry. So here's an interesting Reynolds. one. So we'll get. Davitt was initially contacted by, who's that, 62, Dan? Yeah. 62, that's Devin Yoakum. Yep. But I think what's going to happen is the Panthers are going to get hit for a targeting call here. I believe so. Yep. And that's, and that's going to be a big, that's going to be a big uh, penalty there against the Panthers. Yep, and I think the, um, again, no ill Turn will the there. The no. But the, but the reality is that's the kind of play that, that that rule was instituted to stop where Davitt's kind of held up there and um, just somebody trying to finish off a tackle. Yeah, you're right. And, and I, I definitely, no no intent behind no, that. No, you know, no. No, no malicious intent or anything like that. But definitely uh, definitely still, still, it's all about the safety of the, of the players out there. So that's going to move the ball to the 14, and they're going to give it to David again. And David's going to go in from 14 Double yards out untouched. So it'll be 39-13 Red Tornadoes with a minute 30 left in the third quarter. And Stellar will have another opportunity here to et etch his name into the Red Tornado record books. Yeah, you see Coach uh, Coach Jurasky having a little little extended conversation with him there, just kind of telling him it's 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 just any, it's just like any other extra point. You know, there's no difference between this one and the other 118 you've made in your yeah. career. And the cool thing, and give Jose credit for all this, um, when he when Stellar goes out there, like, the crowd knows what this is about. Yeah. Everybody yeah. kind of understands where we are right now. Right. It's a good snap. It's a good hold. And that one is up. And that one is good. Stellar and you hear the crowd good. erupt. So at this Rip point... Julian Stellar is now the, the, the all-time all leader career, in extra point points made at Mount Carmel area Mount with 119 for his career. Yeah, career and, and that's, uh, as, you, as you see, and, and look at this. This is amazing here. If, if anybody can see the, uh, the fans here, the people giving uh, Mr. Stellar a standing ovation for uh, that career achievement. I mean, I mean that's a, a kid that's been, he's, he's been a staple on this team for years now, and, and you know, you're like you said, he's getting his name etched in those record books. And I think as we've talked about this before, um, and I think Julian would tell you the same, he's not out there making those by himself either. Absolutely not. you got to think his, he, he, he always does it after he makes a kick. He always thanks his battery mate there, uh, Verano, the holder, um, along with, I think it's, is it, is it, uh, Nestico, yeah, as, as the the yep. long snapper, so so that that combination there has been doing it for a few years now, yep. and I mean Stellar has had different people doing those jobs for sure. him, but uh, for the those are going to be the guys remembered for for this one, the 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 one that that bro breaks the record for him. So now Stellar will kick off, albeit probably a little more relieved than he's been in a while. It's going to be to. Haran will take that at the 10. <laughs> and he'll get across 13, the 25, but there's going to be a flag here. Likely, I and think that's this a, one's going to be against the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, but that's a... That's, ben Miller for the Red Tornadoes. Penalty flags on the field. We'll, we'll have to see what it is. And that's that's not even a good... Uh, that's a tough one. It's going to be a personal foul against the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, it was away from the ball. It Unsportsmanlike conduct is actually what they're going to call which I'm not really sure the reasoning behind it. Um, but now there's going to be a discussion here with Coach Dara. 
And I, and I can't tell the conversation with Coach Darrow because it was a little, Coach Darrow was very calm. Yeah. But I'm not sure everybody involved in that conversation was calm. No, I, <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think this, uh, the, the ref here is, um, they're going to move the ball out to the 41. Personal foul penalty was called against Mount Carmel area. Ball's on 41 yard line. Personally, Jim, from what it looked like to me, I, I, it looked like the ref thought that Davitt hit somebody a little too hard, and he threw a flag. That's what it seemed like to me. Widom's going to throw it quick to Rasmussen. The Red Tornadoes do a good job out there of stopping that one. I think Bradley, and they ripped the, the ball out. out. Diaz rips that ball out. But I don't and they're going to wind the clock. Yep. I'm not sure if they're going to rule forward progress stopped or what, but there's a three-yard loss on that one. Oh, it looks like that if, if, that, if that was the ruling, it seemed like that ruling came pretty quickly there because that definitely ball looked like that ball popped out. And last play, Bloomberg retaining possession. Loss of three brings up a second and 13. Yeah, that all happened pretty quick over there. Yeah, definitely did. All right, so it's second and 13 now. Jones is by himself to the right. It's two receivers to the left. Here come the Red Tornadoes after Whittem, and Schultz can't hang on to him. Whittem is going to run now, and he'll stay on his feet. He's still going. Now he's going to ultimately Michael run into Feliciano, and Feliciano will say, that's enough of that. Yeah. But I think there's going to be a, a penalty against the Panthers here some of the blocking downfield. Yeah, and, and that's usually where it happens. You know, you know when these long extended plays, um, that's usually where it happens. And that's going to actually take them back and negate the first down from, from where it looks like because it'll be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Yeah, and that's going to negate the first down completely. So that's a tough one there for the, Red, or for the Panthers. I just, Walking I'm back, blown away by Whittem right now. Whittem I mean, has not been sacked today. No, and, and he's been in the grasp of guys. And again, um, Widom's not a big kid. No, he's not. Right? They list him at, at six foot 160. Yeah. Wouldn't and and we said before that we thought Wharton was bigger. I don't think Widom's any bigger than six foot 160. No, no, definitely not. And there have been big, big guys in red jerseys that have been right there and had him in their grasp and just can't, can't bring him to the ground. So credit Widom, and he's going to. Try to do it again now. Flags all over the place. He'll get Rasmussen for a first down, but those flags Freedom are in the area of holding. Third quarter is going to end on that one, so we'll, we'll see what happens here. It looks like it's going to be a hold against the Panthers. Yeah, I think so. And, I mean, you, you have to think that with with how much Widom has been escaping the pocket, that it's probably been going on a few times tonight. So they're going to take that 10 yards back from the, from the hold, which occurred, looks like, right at the line of scrimmage. At yeah. 45. So when we start the fourth quarter, we're going to set the ball, I think, to officially end it. All right, there we go. We just saw the sign from the official. I think that we've got the official end of the third quarter now. Yeah. So when we start the fourth, it'll be fir third, excuse me, let's try this one more time, second and about 16 for the Panthers from their own 35-yard line, but the Red Tornadoes were on top 40 to 13 after three. Yeah, yeah, so it, it's it's a really good good uh, third quarter there by both teams for the most part. Um, and this is, are we moving right into the fourth quarter already? Somebody have somewhere to be? Well, the ball would have to be moved. Well, they, they moved it back to the 35, so that's. Right, but they, they should be switching sides of the field here as well. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly brings up a second and 17 for Bloomsburg. Are they going to run an untimed play here? Yeah. That, down. That's exactly what it is. Whittem will take it off the right side. So now both teams had broken, had <laughs> gone to their sidelines to start their... And now they're the after quarter discussions. Of the third quarter. But now we'll do it again three. after the untimed down. So now we've officially ended the third quarter. Yeah. So the 13 red tornadoes. 
I mean, usually you, you run the untimed down on a defensive penalty. Right. But normally on an offensive penalty, you don't do that. You know what I mean? You just go into the into the next quarter. Um, but So that's kind of confusing. In I'm, some situations late in the game, there's even a runoff, right, for an offensive penalty. Yeah, yeah. Um, some, some of this stuff going on here late in this third quarter has me a little baffled here. But that's, uh, like you said, the Red Tornado is kind of in a, in a pretty solid in, in the driver's seat. Um, right now going into this fourth now quarter. So I think we're going to start seeing some guys for for the Tornadoes you know, taking a seat down on the bench. Again, fourth quarter, the as we start the fourth quarter, the Red Tornadoes, uh, if they're able to hold on to this for the next 12 minutes, we're looking at another home game next weekend, next Saturday. Sure, it's going to be 1 p.m. It's going to be 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. yet, although that's... That question is true regardless of the outcome of this game. Somebody's going to play next Saturday. Yes. At one or seven. Right. Correct. And again, the, the game that we get uh, Red Tornado fans need to be watching out for um, to see who we will be playing next week is tonight at 7 p.m. at Troy. So um, maybe don't make a trip up there, but definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely uh, watch the score stream and see who we've got. Widom's going to throw, and he's going to take a big shot there from Shikitano. They're going to say Rasmussen caught that, and it was a heck of an effort. I don't think he caught that. I don't, uh, and, and even if he did catch it, I don't think he, uh, there was not a push off there either. Now Shikitano's going to go back and check on Widom because he stuck him. I mean, that's the reality. Shikitano went through the tackle to get to Widom. Yes, he did. And got him just as he released the ball. Um, Widom's been slippery, he's been elusive, but he opted to stay in the pocket and make that throw, and he, he paid the price. Yeah, that was the first time he took a solid Double shot there, Michael and the man, Bloomberg. you're right, Shikitano popped him. His last pass was complete to number 22. So fortunately for, for Widom and the Panthers, and, and really all of us, he pops, about, he pops up, he's gonna walk to the sideline, so. Line. We'll see if he's fit to come back at all today, but certainly the Panthers will miss him Panthers if he's not. And yeah, and I'm, I'm curious to see. It looks like we're going to have... Um, will you get your Wildcat you were looking for? No, it looks like we're going to have number 13, Haran, go in there. Uh, the freshman running that huddle right now. Yeah, and that's, that's Brady Haran at the quarterback spot. So he'll have four wide, they'll bring Gazevich in motion. And there's a little, little movement up front on the Panther side. And that's uh, that's to be expected, especially with the, the motion and everything in there. It's a That's a timing route. You, you got a new quarterback in there, different snap cadence. Um, so he's kind of maybe, maybe the quarterback was a second later than everybody else is used to. Five-yard penalty brings up a first and 15. They checked Widom out on the sideline. I see him walking back towards Coach Kogan. He's yeah, got he, his helmet in hand. Yeah, he's he's ready to get back out there. That kid's a, a gamer, and he's been he's been playing unbelievably all all game long. We're gonna see what we got here. This is a timeout for the Panthers. Timeout, Bloomsburg. See if Widom comes in or not. All right, he's got his helmet on, and he's headed to the huddle there, so we will see. In the game. And Haran's headed to the sideline. So, again, beautiful Ladies picture and here. And just want to thank Double Game CTV, Steve Run, TV Studio, under the direction of Mr. McPhee and Mr. Tresker for really just providing this week in, week out. Uh, Dan, you and I talk about it a lot. Uh, we get to show up on Friday nights or Saturday afternoons and just play, uh, just talk football. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we yeah. get to do uh, because a lot of people do a lot of work uh, beforehand and after. So a big thank you. We just want to make sure we always give the appreciation where it's due there. Most definitely. These guys are, are here, you know, hours before the game and setting up and hours after the game, uh, cleaning everything up and, and breaking everything down and uh, you know wouldn't be able to like you said we wouldn't be able to come out here and just just talk football and, and have a good time you know watching the big red if it weren't for the efforts of everybody else with him to throw now he's got some time there and time's running out and wow. somehow he's going to stay on his feet and he's going to run down the left side now he's going to go back to the middle of the field 
My goodness. What a effort by Whittem. Just running away from Red Tornadoes left and right. And Jim, Shikitano was the first one that had him in the grasp. He went and flung him down, what he thought was down. And when he realized that Whittem was still up, he put his hands on his head, just kind of saying, holy cow, how is this kid still up? Right. <laughs> it's, 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 um, he said this Red Tornado defense has gotten so much pressure on him and they haven't been able to bring him down. Oh, it'll be second and five now. It was first and 15 after the illegal motion penalty. And put him to throw again. I'm gonna throw in the middle of the field. It'll fall incomplete. We just to go back to the, the play where Widom was injured, the, the pass to, Rass, to Rasmussen. I made a comment that I, w I wasn't sold on, on whether or not that was a catch. And I've been told by the replay booth that he got his arm underneath it. He did? Yeah. Replay booth is, of course, my wife who's at home watching <laughs> and has the ability to rewind. She said, no, nah, that was a catch. So always keeping me honest. Of course. That, that's her job. It's third and five from the 26. 10.02 left in this one. Red Torino's up 40 to 13 at the moment. Panthers with the ball. Looking to cut into that deficit. Whittem brings Kelly in motion, so they'll flood the field side. He's going to hand it to Wharton. And my goodness, is that Chikatano again, Dan? Yes, it is, Jim. Down number 88, Matt Chikatano. Chikatano's going to stop him for about a five-yard loss. Yeah, and he does a really good job getting in there. And uh, I think Whittem's probably thinking his lucky stars that that play was a design handoff <laughs> to Wharton there because uh, he would have been, been getting a visit from Chikatano again. And that's going to that's gonna make this a tough fourth down. But this has been where, you know, long third downs and long fourth downs seem to be where Widom's been making yeah. his money this, this game, so or at least in this second half. Straight back, and he's going to throw it quickly. He's looking for Gazevich. He puts it up there. Gazevich and Diaz are in a fight, a hand fight, and it's incomplete. Diaz knocks the ball away. Great coverage there. It'll be first and 10 red tornadoes at D30. Yeah, that was really well defended there by Diaz. He did a good job of just kind of – and, and um, I, I'm i glad the referees kind of let them hand battle there and, and um, didn't throw a flag on that because both, both guys are, are fighting for the ball. They go up there. Diaz does a good job getting his hand in. A um, little bit of contact from both sides. It's a, it's a good call. Let him play through that. So now, again, 9-13 left. Spears will head in there. Feliciano will stay on the sidelines for a moment. Now Kenny Wetzel is going to run in as well. Yeah, so this is going to be an interesting... So he's, Kenny Wetzel's going to bump Kellen Geary <laughs> over to the guard. Yep. Again, Nestico will stay here on the sideline, just taking some more well-deserved time off. And Spears is going to keep this himself. They get over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Yeah, and that's a good tough run there by by Spears. It didn't look like he had like a, like a real legitimate yeah, hole to run yeah. through on that one. Just did a good job of kind of taking his his hits from side to side and, and working forward to get a nice gain of seven. Red Tornado's in no hurry here. Gain of seven brings up a second and three. This is going to be Diaz. Diaz is going to go inside. He's going to come outside. He's going to stay on his feet. And now it's a foot race, and he doesn't lose those, folks. Diaz is gone, 63 yards. It's 46-13, Red Tornadoes. Wow, Jim, wow. That's all, that's all I have to say is wow. Diaz has been a, a bolt of lightning when he gets into the open field. It's nobody can catch him, and he's just been, he's been the spark that this Red Tornado offense has needed. Um, especially, you know, getting here late in the game with, you know, with, with some guys a little dinged up, Diaz is is, is the one that's kind of really keeping this game and, and yep. extending this lead. It looks like looks like Feliciano's going to go out there and hold for Stellar this time. Yeah, it does. Um, when I saw Feliciano going out there, I thought maybe the Red Twinners were going to go for two to try to make this 35 and get the clock moving. I thought so as well. It's a good snap, it's a good hold, and just as we expected, Dan, you get over that 118 hump, 
Yep. 119 goes through and become the leader, and 120 looks simple as ever. So, 47-13 yep. Red Tornadoes. Hey, Jim, I, I think uh, I think that, you know, I'm, I keep looking at the sideline here. I don't see Verano. Now, we know Verano was, was only doing the holding this week. He wasn't, he wasn't really playing. Um, and I keep looking and looking, and I can't see him. So I'm wondering if he, uh, uh, or, okay, I lied. There he there is. He is. <laughs> there he is. He, he just came out of the wash there, and, and there he is. But, you know, maybe they, they figured um, keep him in there because he's been doing it all year long with Stellar. But now Stellar's over the hump. Let, uh, you know, Feliciano go out there just in case Verano's not able to do it at some yeah. point, get yep. somebody a little bit of extra work. But, again, that was a... Just, a, just an unbelievable run there by Diaz. Diaz is is slowly working his way up the the, the list of uh, leading rushers on the team, um, and I mean he's got he's got to have the the highest average yards per carry by a long shot. Yeah, I mean I'd imagine he's probably close to if not um, because I know Feliciano's having a good day too, but yeah. he's probably the leading rusher tonight today oh, yes. this afternoon. He's got a stellar kicks to Haran. Haran's going to have a little trouble with it, but it's not going to get in the end zone, so he's got to scoop it up at the three. And Spears and Widener are going to drop return. him at the right 11. At 11 so it'll be a tough row to hoe for the Panthers here as they go forward. But um, just talking about Diaz, Dan, he's got two carries. Two of his carries have gone for 113 yards in the two touchdown runs. Sports touchdown runs. Yeah, that's pretty military. impressive. I, I mean, I think he's probably After the only one over 100 yards for the day, center. at least so far. Um, Feliciano may be getting close to yeah. that, um, but I think he's definitely, at, at this point, Feliciano's probably still under, I think. What do you just think? I mean, I, it's great to see Diaz kind of getting his due here and, and you know, being able to score touchdowns, but I, one of the more impressive things I think I've seen all season was last week at Shemokin, when Diaz took the sweep to the right and ran it for a touchdown from, I don't know, 40 yards or so. Yeah. And it got called back for a hold, and then on the very next play, they ran a sweep to the left. And here's your favorite formation, Dan. As Haran keeps it, there's going to be a flag. I think that's probably an illegal formation. The ball's out. Blitchick's going to pick it up. And if they're going to let that, that play go on, Great they didn't man. blow that play Keeper. dead. Right. So that is going to be red tornado ball if that is a penalty against Bubble the Panthers. Happened, recovered by number... One, Chase Belichick from Mount Carmel area. There's a flag on the field. And you you can hear from where we're standing, Coach Dara and the Red Trino sideline going JVO. Yeah, yeah. We'll and that's, a, you, you know, this is one of those situations now where we're going to, let's let's try and call some names out here, Jim. We got Maddox Lamas, Hunter Boblick, Caden Hine, trying to, Andrew Rukoski, Jacob Chase, Doak, Chase and Matt Belichick. Yep. Uh, Al, Al, Al Bailey, I think, at the fullback. Maddox Reed. Yep, but Belichick will keep this one himself. He's going to run into Gazevich at the nine, and Gazevich is going to decide he doesn't get any further than that. Matt Belichick on the keeper. Michael Langton's out there. You said Caden Hine, right? Brought down by a host yes. Of defenders. Yes, we got um, number 45, Yager, Yager Delaney. Delaney. Yeah, that's definitely Al Bailey, number 28. I think we got everybody. Number, so we get number 70, Michael Langton. You got yep. him? I think so. So that this is going to be the offense that, that we see here um, on this drive. And, and they're getting the ball in favorable field position. So they're going to be hoping to put another another score up. And that's going to be Al Bailey. And Al Bailey's in. So from seven so yards out, Al Bailey, Al he's, Bailey he's the, the up man. He takes that quick snap. Tornadoes. And it'll be 53-13 here with 724 left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's a that's a great job there. <laughs> Two quick plays there after the turnover. And uh, you kind of see uh, the, the dejection on the, the Bloomsburg sideline now. Uh, yeah, I feel like they're kind of seeing the writing on the wall at this point. You know, it's a, it's a 50 or a 40 point deficit here. Stellar um, for the point after attempt. With the, the point after looming. You're going to see 
Feliciano hold again. Stellar's kick is up, and now he can't miss. It's one, 121 now, and counting. Four to 13 is the point. And it's interesting, right? So you think about what the Red Tornadoes have done over the last four weeks yeah. offensively. Right. So they scored 60 at Loyal Sock, 68 here versus Warrior Run. 49 against Shimokin last week. Yep. And now 54 here with seven and a half to play. Yeah, it's it's, it's been an impressive offensive showing. Um, and honestly, minus that uh, minus that that loyal sock game. If you if you don't count in the points given up in that loyal sock game, um, they gave up, I believe, 21 to Shimokin. Mm -hmm. Um nine to Warrior Run the week before that. Yeah, eight or nine, right? Eight, I think it was. I think it was sixty-eight to nine, or something like that. Maybe, maybe it was eight. Um, and now they've only given up thirteen to to Bloomsburg here with with those those point totals. And they've been doing it with guys that are a little banged up too. Yeah. You, you know, it's, it's getting late in the year. Guys are starting to these injuries that have been nagging throughout the year are starting to hurt a little bit more. Tell her to kick off the Red Tornadoes. And, and they just. They just continue to, to play unbelievable football. And that kick's going to be taken by Rasmussen right at the 30. He's going to try to get to the sideline. He bounces in. He's bouncing out. But Diaz is going to run him down from behind before he can get any further. It's a good return, though, into Red Tornado territory. They'll say he stepped, although say he stepped out of bounds well before Diaz got to him, actually. Yeah, you're right. Diaz caught him from behind. Maddox Reed helped out there, but you're right. They definitely marked him as stepping out way earlier than that. I'm surprised. I, I didn't hear a whistle early. You know, no. they, they kind of let it let it play. Um, but there's a penalty. I didn't even catch what the penalty was there for the Tornadoes. But it looked like just a maybe a five yarder, maybe a quick face mask somewhere. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's probably what it was. I was verifying some scores, Dan, and you're just give you your due. It was 68-9 was the correct score against nine. Warrior okay. Run as the Panthers take a timeout. Yeah, because that was that Three was the game we talked about. We saw two uh, Seven minutes, eight seconds two safeties eight seconds. Yeah. against Warrior Run. One with the the stellar just kind of making the savvy play, kicking that snap that went over his head, the punt out of the back of the end zone. Um, but that was a uh, an interesting game there. <laughs> but we'll see here. We've got, a, got the defense, the Red Tornado defense now in there. And and the unfortunate thing for for Bloomsburg, the unfortunate thing for Mount Carmel at this point in the, in the game is that we look at the Bloomsburg sideline. There's not a lot of guys over no. there. You know, and we talked about this in the in the previous game as well. They had a lot of guys injured and not a lot of players just on the roster in general. So they they really can't even bring out like a second team right. O. Yep, so 61 Jack Roberts in there. Yep. For the Red Tornadoes. Let's see, that's is that Haran? Yeah, that's Haran again. Yeah. He's and gonna go down quick. It's Jack gonna be Robert Robert on attack. Brady, and Hunter Boblick. Yep, Hunter Boblick's in there. Uh, we've got 17, Orville Fezniak, Lukoski, Belichick, Belichick. I think 29, Ben Miller's on the far defensive end. Yep. And we've got Maddox Reed on this this near defensive end. Caden Hine on that defensive line along with Yager Delaney. Um, and I lied. We've only got one Belichick out there. It is yeah, Matt Belichick, not Chase. And it's Tate Adams on the far corner. Yep. I think we got them all. Moran will keep it himself again. And it's Jack Robert again on the tackle. Does a nice, really nice so job there, kind of just working his way down the line. Right he, he had penetration Robert. to begin with, Eight and then worked nine. backwards and did a good job making the tackle there. But credit to, uh, it looked like Caden Hine and Ben Miller over on that side as well, kind of turning that play back in. Did a good job. Yeah, good vibe here in the stadium at the moment. Yeah. Got it for most of the game, but between the band, you got the players dancing a little bit on the sideline. Starting to recognize that the uh, chance of, of living to play another week are pretty good at this point. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, with the continuously running clock right now, 
it's definitely a, looking good for the Big Red. And Horan to run again, and Miller's going to slow him down. Horan, Long enough keeper. for the rest of the Red Tornadoes to show up. Brought down by Post on the, the far Tornadoes side, Tigers. it looks like. Caden Hine was in there. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a that's a good job there. Well, the play brings up a fourth and nine. It's gonna be by fourth. the big red defensively. They've been doing a really good job yeah. of of just you know, you know, whoever they, they're putting out there is and whoa. Wasn't expecting this, but it looks like they're gonna have Haran punt this. And Malcolm Carmel was not prepared for it either. No, and they're not gonna feel it. They'll take their time, let the ball go where it goes. But ben Miller almost got after that one. Good punt there by Haran. It'll go all the way. It'll stop dead at the five. Right, so you can't ask for much more out of, a, out of a punt than that. No, definitely not. Especially when you're not the normal punter. You know, that's you go with offense on the field and have him just kind of kick that ball just to get it out of there. We'll see for the Red tornado, Tornadoes if there's any new faces out there offensively. I don't see any at the moment. Oh, I, I take that back. Nope, sorry, that's 45. Okay, that's Delaney. Yeah. yeah. Third and final timeout. Four minutes, 30 seconds. Panthers are going to take a timeout maybe to, again, we talk about it all the time. Just get their defense set up. Yep, when you make some of those changes, especially in their case with the numbers, you guys are probably playing out of position. Yep, that's exactly what it is. You know what I mean? You, you, have, you have backup linebackers, but you don't have backup defensive linemen, so you're going to bump your linebackers down to the D line and, you know, tell guys they're playing different spots. It kind of throws things off. But I, and I know we've referenced this a few times throughout the year, but you don't really appreciate, I think, uh, just how valuable all these snaps are. Oh, absolutely. To you're, the kind of future of the program. Yeah, for sure. Es especially, I mean, you're, you're getting playoff playoff football snaps. Yeah, right. You know, that's th to think about that. Falls on the five-yard line. Red Torino's take so over. Glitchick, when he's in the ten. shotgun, he's actually going to have his heels on the goal line. Reed will be a yard deep, and they'll hand it to Reed off the right side. Number two, Good job there by the carry. Panthers stopping it up Brought down by after two, a couple Jimmy yards. Lions number 26, Bloomberg. Dylan Weaver going to be heading in there for the Red Tornadoes now. Reed will come out. Yeah, it's a nice nice run there for a short gain there by Reed. Um, did a good job of kind of not gain going down, second, uh, not going down easily and, and fighting ahead for a couple extra yards. We'll pick up about two, second and eight now, 350 and counting. I'm gonna get it off sides here, I think. Okay, bring bring in Lukoski in motion. Yeah, you wonder in those cases, is it the inflection in Blitchick's oh, voice, or whatever the, the change in Wolfberg. cadence is to kind of bring Lukoski in motion, that got somebody yeah. a little, little jerk there. Yeah, and it's a, you know, helping these Red Tornadoes kind of get out of that hole that they were yeah. in there with, you know, the ball being down at the five-yard line. Um, you know, giving up free yards here is, is exactly what the Red Tornadoes will take. Oh, boy. And Weaver somehow, or is that Bailey? 28. Uh, looked Bailey like, with the it looks like, that's Bailey. So they must have moved Weaver because Weaver's Brought listed as a line, uh, a fullback, number 26. So they must have moved Weaver to Bailey's position at the fullback spot and put Bailey back there in the backfield. So Blitch does a good job getting a hand on that snap and then is able to like almost just direct it in Bailey's direction and he grabs it and moves forward. So it's third and a yard yeah, that's a 14. Now Blitch is going to keep this. <laughs> yeah. Good call, Dan. And that's he'll get the first down. He'll, he'll take a shot, but he'll get the first down. It's the setup on that one. You know, they move Belichick to the Percent to the side Belichick. with the fullback and the or they move. I'm sorry, they move Bailey to the right side with the fullback and the wing. You know that that's pretty much just going to turn into a quarterback power there. Now Lukowski and Bailey are going to come out. It looks like we've got Urban Avich and Velasquez are heading in. Yep. Yep. Velasquez is probably going to go to that wing spot there. With Urban Avage. Back with Belichick, yep. Yeah. 
Blitchick's gonna keep this one himself. Blitchick on the keeper. And Blitchick runs Stop tough there, Jim, coming right. from that, that, that quarterback right. spot. He's not scared to get in there and, and yeah, run. Looks like Lamas is coming out. They're gonna send Bailey back in. Bailey, the jack of all trades. I think they're <laughs> gonna put him on the def on the offensive line here now. Okay, looks like they're gonna bump bump some guys a little bit and put Bailey at the tight end spot. Which extends Urban Average in motion, but he hands it to Velasquez. He's gonna get hit hard at the 20. Now there's, there's a little, little difference there, so he's gonna get tackled by number 17, Caden Hine. Caden James. Caden James, excuse me, thank you. Yeah. Caden James listed at 6'4" for the Panthers, while the Red Tornadoes list Velasquez at 5'7". Yeah, yeah. So there's definitely a little size difference there. For the Red Tornadoes. This time it's gonna go to the up man. Who I think that is Weaver, if we get a quick look here. 26 Still Dylan tracking. Weaver with the carry. Yeah, yeah, that's Weaver. 26. <laughs> Good eyes, Dan. Yeah. Uh, and so that should do it. And we'll we'll wait because we were wrong. I was pretty wrong about the end of the third quarter when I thought that was gonna end. Well, there's no no flags here to, to, to mess anything up there this time. But. So we got about seven seconds left in what's been a really impressive win for the Red Tornadoes. There we go. There is the zero. So we're officially can we can officially close the book now on this District 4 2A quarterfinal matchup between the Red Tornadoes and the Panthers. The Red Tornadoes are going to come out victorious, 54-13 behind yet another unbelievable Mount performance Carter, Tornadoes, on 54. the ground. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're, you're right, Jim. I think they're going to be well over the 400-yard mark. They may be even approaching that 500 yards. We'll have to see from, uh, from Jose for sure what we're looking at. But that, it was, uh, you're right, and, and that was... When they, when they had 266 yards in the first half, I figured that it was going to be uh, more of the same in, yeah. in the second half, and that's exactly what it was. They just dominated on the ground. Um, didn't really have to do much else. No, and I think what's interesting is you've got, you've got um, you know, the Panthers, they did a good job in that third quarter. And it, it was, you know, you can look back and, and wonder, you know, okay, was it, did they threaten enough to kind of, you know, have, have a chance to really uh, push the Red Tornadoes. It was, a great day to be it was a enough to wake them up. Yeah. Right? It, it, it got their attention. It definitely was. I mean, after because it seemed like the Red Tornadoes, they put up 20 there in the first half, and, and they had a lot of opportunities for it to be yeah. more. A lot of opportunities for it to be more that they missed. They kind of missed opportunities, and looking at it, it, it really wasn't a uh, – it wasn't their best half. Right. I would, I would say there are definitely yeah. some mistakes. It wasn't their best half. So I think that it was something that the Red Tornadoes really wanted to uh, uh, focus on in the second half. You're right. That, that extra little, uh, those points they gave up in the second half woke them up for sure. Right. And then that offense just took off. And one, one other thing to mention here, we were focused on, on Stellar as we should be, right? Stellar certainly setting a record yep. uh, for most extra points made in a career at Mount Carmel. Uh, he is now the holder. He'll only add to his lead at this point. Um, but the other kind of noteworthy occurrence now, we can say, since the clocks have officially struck zero, is that Coach Dara has won his 50th game as the head coach of the Red Tornadoes tonight. So that's always a cool thing, too. Congrats, Coach Dara. Um, certainly hope we can put a couple more couple more in the win column this season. This, this <laughs> season, for sure, yeah. Um, so we'll see here. I, I don't want to hold everybody up, but I'm looking. I think Jose's about to send us some stats, and I know if you've been tracking, you probably want to understand where where everything wrapped up. On the on a go-forward basis, like we said before, uh, based on their position as the two-seed, the Red Tornadoes are going to be home next week. Yeah. Now we can say that definitively. They'll have the winner of Troy versus Sarah. That'll happen at 7 p.m. tonight. I don't know how you're going to track it. Score stream. Follow uh, your score WNEP stream. WNEP TV. Maybe you'll just take a drive up to Troy tonight. I won't. I will not be doing that. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. grateful the Red Tornadoes got to the two seats, so we didn't have to go to Troy. 
it's cold, it's far, it's all the things that I don't like in life. <laughs> um, I don't want to have to go up there, but we'll certainly be happy to have them here uh, if they're victorious. Yeah and, yeah, and Jim, like you said, it looks like Jose is is definitely he's definitely uh, working on the stats down there. I I, I really want to get these out to everyone because it was another impressive impressive night of offense from these tornadoes. Yeah, it was, and I want to see if we can just confirm that that uh, Diaz was the leading rusher. Yeah, and and, and just something to uh, to look at here. In the first half, I didn't even mention this, and, and I apologize for it. In the first half, Steller had 10 carries for 120 yards. Oh, wow. Um, Feliciano had five for 48. Diaz had two for 37, and Farinato had four for 44. So, so Diaz is probably up around, he'll probably finish around 150 yards. Yeah, and uh, for the night. so we might have three over 100 if, yeah. if Feliciano eclipsed that 100-yard that hundred mark. But I think... I think, Dan, I think we're going to have to close the book on this one. It's been a long day. It's been a cold day. Yes, it has been, for sure. I don't want to hold anybody up too much longer. So we're we're going to go ahead and get out of here. You have to check the paper tomorrow for the stats. We'll certainly touch base on them next week. So we'll go from there, and we will uh, we'll actually, we're getting a call yeah, here. Yeah, so getting, getting a call ahead, from Dan. Jose pick, here. Pick Hang Jose's on call. I think he's trying to help us out here. So we'll see. Jose's going to, I think, read us out the stats here. Uh, no. This is a new one. This is what we get from Jose. This is, there's always some way or another he gets us this information. He gets it for everybody. So the Red Tornadoes as a team rushed for 554 yards today. Three different red tornadoes have gone for over a hundred yards. And that's the first time three players have gone for over a hundred yards in a single game since John Veach, Al Bailey, and Nick Sebus did in 1998. Diaz was the leading rusher, four carries for 150 yards, but just to go back again, Al Bailey. And Al Bailey also scored. Al Bailey also scored a touchdown here tonight. So, pretty cool situation. Thank you. No, thank you so much, Jose. We appreciate it. But Jose always coming through for us, always, 100 percent of the time. But that's again, we're it's cold here for a lot of people. So we're gonna get out of here. Glad we were able to provide that information to you. For sure. Um, so thanks again, Jose. But for Jose Gonzalez, I'm Jim Lesko. And I'm Dan Lesko. Thanks for watching. WKMC TV broadcast and we will see you right back here next Saturday to face the winner of Troy and Sarah. Have a great evening. <laughs>